Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here coming at you with a live cast of the OSL Finals from 2004. I hope you're all excited, as excited as I am. This is going to be absolutely insane. I'm super looking forward to seeing these games. If you are just joining us randomly or if you're watching this on YouTube later or something along those lines, you don't know what's going on. What I'm doing is I'm going to be casting the VODs from the 2004 Ever OSL Finals. So these games were played 16 years ago, almost to this day. Uh, in 2004, this is being cast in 2020 though. So I'm going to be doing live commentary of the games here in 2020 of the games from 2004. So we're doing a little bit of a history lesson. This is one of the most important finals in StarCraft history for some reasons I'm gonna go into in more detail in a little bit. And um, so we're doing a little bit eSports history here and we're casting some old finals. It should be really, really exciting. We've got a couple excellent players lined up today. And also if you're watching this on YouTube later, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some uh, uh, links to the timestamps to the different uh, aspects of the game if you want to skip the pregame show or anything like that. But um, we do have a lot to talk about here. These players, I mean, these are both absolute legend of StarCraft. These are two legendary players, two gods amongst men for the game of StarCraft, and they're going to be facing off against each other. Not only that, Uv was, you know, one of the best amateur players. He got picked up by SKT and basically taken under the wing of Boxer, who was the original legendary player. So we've got a little bit of uh, teacher versus student action in this game as well. Uh, I am just super, super excited. Like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the dynamic between these two guys in a little bit. But um, let's go ahead and uh, get started looking at these two players and what we can expect today between them. And uh, let's go ahead and check out the uh, maps, and then we'll look at the stats of each player as well. All right, so hopefully my microphone is still working here, and we'll go ahead and get started with looking at the maps in these two players. Uh, this is a best of five that we're going to be having today, and uh, it's going to be on these. There's four maps. And the first map is going to be played potentially twice if it gets to a game number five. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. It uh, it all depends on, you know, this could be a 3-0 quick victory or it could be a long best of five. It is TVT, so you never know. Uh, but in any case, let's go ahead and check out what's going to be going on for these first maps. And the first map that we're going to be having today, hold on just a moment. Let me get it uh, pulled up here is going to be none other than oops that's the wrong one hold on ah okay <laughs> i'm sorry I, I figured a lot of this stuff out ahead of time and then it's not working and there we go okay so bifrost bifrost is their first map for today it's going to be uh, also the fifth map like i said if it gets to a game five and bifrost is a very very interesting map uh, it's, we've seen a lot of interest, crazy games on this. Um, we could take a look at, uh, a little bit more about this map. So this is a, a very peculiar map. You can see it has kind of a strange shape to it. It's got like almost a spiral pattern as far as, uh, the direction that your land troops will go. But that also means that it's good for air troops as well. We might see a lot of drops on this map. We'll have to see. Um, it is a two spawn point map, so you know exactly where your opponent is going to be. And um, there's also these long ridges along the sides. So you can kind of see it in this little preview there that along the sides there are these long, long ridges that um, kind of overlook both the main and the third base, right? You kind of think of the natural expansion as being, um, you know, something that's your your easiest expansion to take, right? And so your easiest expansion to take in this case is actually, um, you know, behind uh, behind your, your main on an upper ground, basically, right? So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and remove these guys here so we can see a little bit more there. So you can see like in the top right base, for example, there's a ramp leading up to your natural expansion. And it's a mineral only, ex mineral only expansion as well, which is going to possibly play into things. Sometimes you've seen, uh, you know, players take the third base, which is farther away from their main first because it has a gas expansion. But again, that ridge that you can see going along the entire left side of the map and the entire right side of the map... Um, could play a role in this because, well, this is a Terran versus Terran. And if you can get siege tanks up on the high ground above your opponent's base, um, the, either the main or the third base, um, then it is uh, it can be a very bad time for you. So uh, in any case, that's, uh, that's the first map. And it's going to be very, very interesting. I really feel like we're going to see some shenanigans on this map of some kind, either drop ships or vultures running around the ridges or something along those lines. It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of crazy. So, um, any case, let's go ahead and move on to map number two, and I will pull up map number two. Just a moment. There we go. All right. So uh, here's map number two. It's gonna be on Pelinor. Pelinor is another. All of the maps in this entire pool are all weird maps. By the way, it's really really strange map pool. So uh, Pelinor is a desert map, and you can see that it is also has a strange construction in that you've got your main spawn point, of which there are four, by the way, and there's kind of like a half expansion inside your main. Like there's a choke point leading out to the rest of the map, and but before that choke point, there's a thing with just four mineral patches. And so it's kind of the thing where like, okay, it's like a half expansion. Do you... Do you spend the resources on a command center to get that half expansion or are you gonna stay back in your base you know or are you gonna take a risk and go for the natural so the real natural expansion with the full minerals and the gas is actually outside your base and up on a high ground which means that it's hard to hold hard to take and it also means that your opponent can rush you and take that high ground and again in a tvt when you've got tanks on a high ground, it can be lethal. And so we're going to see if that is uh, what's going to happen. Um, I've got this uh, map rated as shenaniganicious. Uh, it is a map that we've seen so many shenanigans on because it is such a weird map to take your natural that often we'll see players go for one base play. And because you have that high ground outside your opponent's expansion, uh, sorry, your opponent's main rather, uh, it, it really, really leads to a lot of shenanigan shenanigan delicious play uh people do weird stuff on it so we'll have to see if uh you know that ends up happening on this case all right so let's go ahead and uh pull up map number three if i can do this correctly there we go map number three is going to be on mercury and mercury is another uh strange map um, I mean, like I said, they're all kind of strange, right? Mercury is a four spawn map and it's a space map, obviously. And it's, it's not just a space tile set. It's a really space focused map. There's all kinds of different, uh, empty areas between these space platforms, right? So again, airplay is going to potentially be, um, ridiculous, right? Uh, you can see that you have your main base and then there's a smallish choke into a natural expansion, which has a wide area around it. So it's kind of hard to hold on to, um, lots of, all the natural expansions have a spot behind them for, uh, tanks to land or something like that, or not all of them, but some of them do. Um, you can see like the natural at the north side of the, side of the map has kind of an empty area on the right of it where you could land a drop. Whereas the natural expansion on the, um, right side of the map doesn't really have that. So the spawn points might matter in this, depending on what kind of crazy stuff they get up to. Um, but yeah, there's lots of gaps. So dropship play is going to be important on this map. Um, and then a lot of the expansions are kind of spread out and there's, it's a hard to get your forces by land to your expansions. So, uh, it's going to make things uh, a little bit interesting here. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at our fourth and final map. Uh, not final necessarily in this series, but it's the last map because the first map Bifrost is played potentially twice if it gets to a game five. Um, and let's go ahead and check out Requiem. Um, here's Requiem. Requiem, again, another weird map, um, has four spawn points and the spawn points are on the low ground. So there's a low ground main base 
and then there's a little ramp leading up to an expansion. And that ramp is actually even really weird to hold. You have to build your buildings in a really strange place, and it's kind of a wide area, so it's even hard to build a wall at that that ramp. So, um, you know, sometimes we see players take the high ground just because then they have the high ground. Sometimes we see players play a little bit safe, uh, and 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 often go for attack units first rather than for quick expansion on this map because you don't want to lose control of your own high ground. So it's kind of interesting. Once you do get to that natural expansion, um, it's a really wide choke point, so it's going to be hard to hold as well. But again, you know, for Terrans, you're going to hold it with, um, uh, you know, lots of... Um, and I just realized that I spelled Requiem wrong on this screen. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but uh, anyway, it's going to be easier to hold as a Terran player. And one of the weird things about this map, though, is there's, there's pseudo-island expansions. And I say pseudo island because you can get there by air or you can actually, you can go through the mineral lines of the naturals and get into these side areas. So there are expansions that you can kind of take, but then they're harder to protect because you can't actually get your own reinforcements there. So uh, it's going to be, you know, a little bit weird to see uh, how that works as far as, um, you know, who can take what spots, basically. It's going to be... Uh, tough. So, any case, let's go ahead and uh, I think we'll transition out of that. Did that work? All right. Yes. Okay. So, um, that's the maps that we're looking at today. Again, it's going to be a really, really strange day. Uh, of of all the maps are really, really, you know, lend themselves to weird stuff happening. We're probably going to see a lot of dropship play today. Um, just because of the fact that, um, these maps all, um, you know, have these places where being able to go across the ridges and the minerals and the gaps and all this stuff is going to be, uh, a pretty big deal. So, uh, I'm expecting we're going to see dropship play. We're probably going to see, uh, wraiths play out of these players as well. You know, Oof uh, is, is a really strong player right now and Boxer is as well. I would say Boxer... Both of them are, are known for being uh, being able to use a lot of different strategies. Boxer, I think, specifically um, is known for, you know, being able to just do crazy, crazy stuff. So anyway, we'll have to see how that. So let's go ahead and check out the stats of these two players and learn a little bit more about them. Okay, how about now? Sorry about that. My mic was not working on this screen. Apologies. Um, <laughs> I So by the way, I, I've been so busy lately that I haven't actually been able to work on the graphics and the screens and everything for this cast until uh, just yesterday I was able to start on most of it. So uh, I didn't get a chance to go through and work out the kinks. Sorry about that. But um, we're going we're gonna to figure it out as we go. Uh, in any case, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the stuff that we know about. I love Oov. He is, of course, uh, a Terran player. Oops. Wrong transition, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Terran player from SKT1. And, of course, both of them are from SKT1. His nickname is the Cheater Terran. Now, uh, this is not because he actually cheats or anything like that. It's not, um, it's not a... Oh, I don't have the music on right now either, do I? Let me change that. Okay, now we got the music going on. Cool. I think. I don't know if it worked. All right, anyway. Um, yeah, so he's called a cheater turn just because, you know, Oov was one of the first players to really establish what real macro was, right? He was one of these players um, that... Uh, you know, before this, people didn't really focus as much on macro. It was more about strategics, and people didn't really understand what the potential potential of the the game was. You know, in two thousand four, the game had only been out for five years, and it only been you know really really played hardcore for a few years. Um, so it was kind of a new thing. So Uv came out. He was just he's called the cheater Terran because every time you look back at his base, 
he'd just have all this stuff. And you'd be like, where'd this come from? This is crazy. He always has a, just a strong economy and a strong ability to continue making units out of the buildings that he has and just to maximize. So Cheater Terran, because it seems like he gets troops out of nowhere, essentially. Um, now let's check out some of his accomplishments that he's had recently. Um, you know, he is, like I said, rising star right now, basically in 2004. It's coming off wins of three MSLs in a row. You can see the last three MSLs, the Spree MSL, the HANA FOS MSL, the TG Sumbo MSL. He's won the last three MSLs in a row. And he looked like he was going to take the previous OSL, the Gillette OSL. Didn't quite pull it off. He was beating every Zerg in the planet all over the place. And um, somehow July Zerg pulled it off against him after 27 league wins in a row against Zergs. July Zerg beat him, and so he went down and ended up taking third place in the last OSL. So this is a chance for the for Oof to really say, you know what, I can take the OSL as well as the MSL. This is, um, you know, a, an opportunity for him to really show himself in that sense. Um, you know, and these are all, all these accomplishments that we see are like in the last year, year and a half. So he is a, a really, really strong player in that sense. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and look at a little bit more of what we know about Oof. Let's look at his TVT right now. His TVT stats, his career TVT is 64%. So very, very, very strong in his TVT matchup. The last six months, again, 63%. So sometimes, you know, you have players that uh, they were uh, really good at a matchup before and they didn't keep up with the times. Um, that's not the case for Oof. This is, I mean, most of his career is in the last year, year and a half. So... Uh, he's still strong even the last six months. Um, he's had some notable matches recently that kind of show where his TVT is at. Because if you win 64% of your games against a computer AI, that's not a very strong uh, statistic. But uh, if you're winning against the top players, then that is very, very strong. He actually just beat Nada in the round of eight of this exact Star League. Nada, again, one of the other best TVT players in the world in 2004. And Oof just beat him two to one. So very strong accomplishment there. He also just like the week before this game was played beat Zelos in the KTF Premier League. Um, so again, Zelos, one of the strongest Terrans in 2004. He just beat him uh, in the Gillette OSL, the previous one. He actually beat in the third place match. He, he beat another Terran called Control, who's also very good um, in the third place match, three to two. So again, a little bit close. So it's not his TVT is not unbeatable like his TVZ is. Um, and we saw that in the round of 16, he lost twice in a row to sink in the round of 16 and almost, I mean, if he didn't have two other Zergs in his group to just pound on over and over again and get free wins, basically, he could have been eliminated from the round of 16. Um, you know, this is a seeded player from the previous tournament. Um, and one of the strongest around, he could have been eliminated just by the fact that sink kept beating him. And finally, when it went down to the extra round of tiebreakers, he did manage to defeat Sync in order to advance out of that group. Um, but he lost to Sync, and again, Sync pretty strong. But here's the thing, we're going to talk about this more in a minute, but Boxer just destroyed Sync in a TVT. So is that a sign of things that this player, you know, if you use Sync as a metric, that Oov just lost to Sync a couple times and Boxer just owned him, you know, is that a good way of placing where these players are? It's hard to say. All right, so um, let's go ahead and check out a little bit more about the man, the myth, the All right, how about now? My mic should be working. Again, apologies about this. I didn't quite have time to go through and fix all of this. So uh, my mic should be working now. All right. <laughs> I just forgot to add my microphone to these uh, these side scenes about the, the player. So in any case, as I was just saying that to myself, apparently, this is the man, the myth, and the legend, Slayer's Boxer, 
And we know him now as this legendary player who played for years and years, was a coach, is now kind of a streamer. He's just like so famous that he doesn't even really need to do anything. He's been in commercials for Intel uh, because he was that cool. Um, but in 2004, actually, you could still say he was a legend, but, you know, he was still in his prime. He, he, he wasn't, uh, well, I wouldn't say prime, but like he was still playing strong. He was still one of the top players around in 2004. He was not like an old player that was legendary from the old days. He was still active in 2004. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so it's really, really going to be exciting to see what's going to happen here. Now, the thing is, is Boxer in 2004, though, like I said, he wasn't really in his prime. Oof has been destroying everyone recently. He's been super, super strong. Um, just, just wrecking faces left and right. But Boxer has not really been in a Star League Finals in two years. It's been, I could be wrong on the math, but it's been a year and a half or two years since he's actually been to a Finals. So this is actually a chance for Boxer to not just win a Star League, but it's a chance for him to prove himself that he's still on top of the game. That the new generation of Oov has not come to take his crown yet right? Um, that he is still, still a competitor. And so this is a really strong chance for him to do that. Also, this is his chance for, to be the first person to ever win three OSLs. Um, you know, they came up with the concept of the golden mouse, uh, specifically, I believe for boxer, or maybe it was for, uh, for someone, one of those early players, because they were like, wow, some of these players are so strong that they can win multiple OSLs. And Boxer is poised to be the first person to win two OSLs. He has not won one in a long time. Now, here's the thing. Uh, let's look at his record first, actually, before we talk about his accomplishments here. Um, again, a lower win rate. You know, his career win rate, 55% TVT. And in the last six months, it's actually even a little bit less than that. So we can see that's a result of the fact that he has been playing, has not been playing at his strongest, you know, in recent years. Um, so that's something to think about here. Um, but again, you know, can we say that his stats mean everything? He did lose 2-3 to good friend in August in uh, another Star League. I forget which one uh, in a best of five. Good friend, very, very strong though. Um... But look at his really recent performance, right? He just, in the round of eight, remember we were talking about how Oov struggled against Sink in the round of 16? And the round of eight, Boxer just destroyed Sink. It was not really even close. He just really, really uh, beat him handily 2-0 in the round of eight. Um, and that's a strong turn right there. Now, he also, in the group stage, he played against Nada, and he beat Nada in the group stage. And he just that wasn't a fluke because he just played Nada in the Premier League. And beat Nada in that as well. And so, again, you know, Nada is a good, perhaps is a good uh, a point of reference. Oov was able to beat Nada, but it was close. It was a 2-1 victory, um, whereas Boxer was able to beat Nada twice in recent days. So, anyway. Uh, now, here's what I wanted to say this for last, because this is just ridiculous, right? Let's look at some of Boxler's accomplishments. Look at that! This, this is insane. He's won so much stuff. He's won so much stuff. I don't even know how many stuff are on this screen right now. And I had to leave stuff off. I had to leave off some of the show matches that he uh, won. Or like the, you know, the Four Kings tournament where it was like uh, they invited. It was an invitation with four of the best players or whatever. Um, he, he has something like 20 accomplishments or something crazy like that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um... So yeah, I mean, like I tried to squeeze in a bunch of the best ones, but you can see uh, first place in the G Voice OSL, second place in the Sky OSL, third place in the Olympus OSL, second place in the in the other Sky OSL, um, first place in the Coca Cola OSL, so uh, first place in the Hanbit OSL. So he has won uh, so much stuff, and actually I have him written down as three winning three OSLs already. So I'm not sure why that is because I think I must have put one down wrong because I I checked and he's only won two OSL, OSLs before this, I believe. Could be wrong. It's easy to get confused. Um, it's really easy to get confused with uh, figuring out all Boxer's accomplishments because he has just done so much. Um, and, you know, that's why if you watch the video that I did at the very beginning of this Star League when I was started casting this entire OSL from the round of 16 on, I talked about how if you count up the first, second, and third place 
uh, wins for all of the players in the round of 16. It's like 40 of them. 40 of them among 16 players. And Boxer has like a third of them. So it's it's just crazy. You know, it's absolutely crazy how good Boxer is. And that's why it's kind of like, that's why he's such a, this, uh, a figure of StarCraft that it's really important for him going to this match to say, look, this isn't all just in the past. I didn't win everything and then get washed up or anything like that, you know? So, I don't know. It's it's going to be crazy to see see how this goes. So, um, yeah. So, now we know about the players. We know about the maps. And um, I think we're probably going to get started here in just a second. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be good to go. Again, this is a best of five. Um, so, it could be... Could be a long series, it could be a short one. We're gonna find out pretty soon. All right, let's go ahead and um, get into game one, I suppose. Why keep waiting? We're gonna go ahead and start in just a moment. Let me just transition over into the game screen. And we're gonna get into game number one of the 2004 ever OSL Finals. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number one of the Ever OSL 2004 Finals. And we got Boxer versus Oove. Here we go, getting started with game number one. And I am just so, so stoked about this. Um, you know, this is just going to be so epic one way or another. There we have Oove. They both play for SK Telecom, of course in the bottom left. So Ooh is going to be the green Terran player. And that means Boxster, the emperor of Terran. And they, as someone said in chat, uh, that's why he was called the emperor because he had so many wins. He was just like the strongest Terran player ever for a few years, basically until he started to come up. We had players like Zelos and Nada coming out as well. And let me know, by the way, in the chat, what you think about the uh, audio levels between the background of the game and uh my audio as well i can turn up the audio on the the game with the korean casting and the game sounds in the background if you want <clears throat> but let's go ahead and get into this game um we got oove placing a supply depot kind of in this back area that's kind of interesting um whereas boxer they're both kind of placing it in places where it's for scouting information is what i'm looking at um the depot behind him is, you know, in case Oof tries to put units up there, we could see a quick drop into the high ground above the main or something like that. And you want to have vision up there to A, see it coming, and B, so that you can fire up at the enemy units and stuff. And is that actually, what is that? Is that a barracks down there? I thought that was the supply depot, but maybe it's actually a barracks that Oof is building. It's hard to see. Anyway, Boxer is building his barracks near his choke point. It's not actually blocking the choke point, but it's near it. And I'm just, like, so excited right here. Um, like, I, I feel like this game is already epic, and nothing has actually even happened yet. So this is kind of crazy. Like, I'm just so stoked about this. Um, I'm seeing someone say, turn up the game volume a little bit. So let's pump it up a little little bit, and we'll see if that's, uh, if that's too loud or not. <clears throat> um, in any case... Yeah, so we have, um, it looks like Oove going for a very fast barracks, if I saw that correctly, into gas as well pretty quickly. So we're seeing Oove, I believe, trying to rush a little bit faster into his tech here, and he's probably going to put down a factory at some point. Now, that could mean a starport uh, at some point, but I'm not sure. No, okay, so that was a barracks there. Maybe I just missed his depot, though. Maybe his depot was normal. I wasn't paying too much attention. I was kind of looking around at the chat and what have you. So, uh, anyway, well, let's, we'll find out when we see their factories timings and it looks like the factory timings are about even. So we're going to see pretty traditional game here. Um, yeah, both of the factories on this at the same pace. So no, neither player doing anything too crazy right now. They're both just made one Marine just to be able to kill off scouting SCVs. And then they're floating their barracks. The barracks floating across the map is actually a pretty important you want to be able to get a scout in, and your your barracks is basically worthless in a TVT. Um, you know, once factory units are out on the map, 
uh, your Marines are pretty much not going to do anything. Um, and so the barracks is actually better to be used to just float across the map and get a scout in. And so you can see that small choke point, by the way. Both players doing uh, a nice little thing where they build a supply depot in that choke point, And then uh, it blocks it so that by building a supply depot there, it makes it a smaller choke point, but it also makes it so that they can't... Um, they can't, the, your opponent can't block it either, basically, like with their barracks landing in the gap or something like that, which we've seen in the past. Both players getting star ports, by the way. This is crazy. Oh, and is Oof going to spot it? Oof's SCV gets up and spots Boxer's double star ports. Double star ports down for Boxer. Oof sees this coming. Now, here's the thing. Is he going to respond by getting a second star port of his own and trying to contest the air in the rates versus rates? Or is he going to, wait, where's this? Okay, I guess he just messed up his uh, creation of the machine shop there, so he had to lift it off and land it back down. Um, by the way, those signs said Cheetah Terran in the, <laughs> the crowd there. So we got some Oof fans there. And it's actually kind of interesting. I don't know if uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but if you go to a finals in Korea for the for uh, Brood War, and actually, hold that thought, because Oof is coming in with two vultures. He's actually going to take out one of Boxer's vultures. And this is actually really bad. He's going to have to force... He's going to be forced to build a depot here, which isn't going to survive very long. This is actually really bad, because by making that second starport, he's focusing his money on uh, the, the air battle instead of the ground. And so Oof is actually able to get a little bit of advantage. And now he's going to get S... I'm um, sorry, vultures in here. Wait... Uh, is that the same building, or did he build another building? It looks like he actually canceled the depot, built an eBay, and was able to block the vultures from getting there. That was actually really close. I thought those vultures were going to get in there and start killing off SCVs, which could have been really, really deadly for Boxer's economy. So we are going to see an academy going down. So basically, and the armory, there we go. So basically, Oov is going to say, look, uh, in a straight-up fight, Goliaths, are going to be better versus race than other wraiths are. So I'm going to go for the better units. Now, the thing is, is race, of course, are more mobile. So um, that was, you know, race are going to be able to utilize the fact that this is a kind of a weird map and uh, there's a lot of ridges and what have you. And this is kind of interesting. He's landed his barracks. I'm not sure. Oh, I guess he landed his barracks in order to just make sure that it could stay there longer before burning down. The missiles of the race are going to do more damage than the lasers shooting down. So he's just going to go ahead and landed his barracks there. But his barracks is going to burn down, um, which means that he's actually not going to build any more factories if he wants to. So he needs to build a factory really quickly, actually. He needs to get a second factory down right now, I think. Well, he's not going to go for it. I guess he's just going to go on Wraiths and Goliaths versus Wraiths. We saw the Academy going down, so that means Oof is going to have his comset station up pretty soon here. And Boxer already has Cloak, though. So he needs that comset. And this is the thing. He's got very... He's only got one comset. If he didn't already use it, I could have missed it. Um, he's only got one comset to use. So he has to be really, really careful not to waste it. Now... He's actually saying, look, if you're going to harass my base, I'm going to harass yours because then your wraiths are not going to be able to stand up to it. This is a really smart move by Oov. He can say, look, I'll battle your wraiths with my goliaths and I'll send my wraiths to your base to counter harass. And you can't battle both because your wraiths are not going to be as good um, in two locations. Uh, Oov actually getting a second base up already, which is interesting. Um, Boxer starting to produce tanks as well. Both players are going to have to get tanks. Eventually, um, you know, you, it's really hard to pull off just air battle, especially, I mean, Boxer needs the tanks to battle the Goliaths, essentially. He cannot just go with all air units now that he knows that he's been kind of countered. And he also can't stop building air units, though, because he's already invested so much in the starports that he kind of needs to keep doing that. So, anyway, we'll see uh, how that goes. Um, anyway, um... Yeah, so um, I feel like Oof has a little bit of an advantage here. Oof is also getting cloaked, though. I find that really interesting that he's actually investing in his own cloaking technology um, in order to combat that against Boxer. Boxer is getting his own engineering bag because he saw the starport, so he knew that wraiths are a possibility as well. But um, here's the thing is, is Oof... If Boxer can't really do much with his wraiths because Oof has Scan and Goliaths, and so... There's nothing stopping Oof from just getting a second base. And he's going ahead and transferring SCVs over to that second base right now. Now, Boxer is running his ground units up around the map. This is what we were talking about with this map um, on Bifrost, where 
there's the ridge that goes all the way around the side of the map and he's moving his units up along this top part he must know that Uv is expanding to that third base and so he's already targeting that third base going after it by going after the high ground and is he what is he building up here a bunker or something like that oh he's probably building a turret on the high ground in preparation for moving out there okay this is really interesting boxer is catching up he's way behind on his expansion but he's going to take a middle expansion and it's actually really really clever because that means his expansion will not be exposed to the high ground and now uh oh Uv sees this attack coming up the high ground attack is coming up and Uv is trying to move into position where he can attack from the low ground is he actually going to run around the high ground it looks like he is the race of Boxer are transferring over. They're going to get free hits. He cloaks to avoid getting more hits on him, but he looks like he lost a rate there. But he's basically going to have the tank siege up on the high ground. Does he not have siege mode yet? Siege mode is not yet complete. He's able to still get some kills, though. Siege mode is going to complete any moment, though. But it, it, basically, Oof is trying to run across this high ground to assault this, this little attack. But the wraiths are there to protect the tanks, essentially, along with one vulture as well, of course. So Boxer is going to be able to do some damage. And while he's taking his own base in the middle, sort of middle bottom right of the map, he's going to be able to catch up uh, here with uh, his his own forces. Now, oh, the Wraiths of Uv are coming in here. They are able to cloak to get away um, from Boxer's Wraiths coming back here. But uh, it's going to be tough for both players. They, I don't think either player has a ton of scans. They probably only have one or two scans each. Um, so it's going to be an interesting little battle here. And look... Uv now is not mining at all at that second base. Boxer has turned the tables. Turned the tables very quickly, actually, by taking his own second base, by guarding it with his own um, turret and his own wraiths, and um, and stopping the mining at Uv's second base. And Uv, I'm a little bit surprised. Uv is actually coming in here. Instead of trying to assault that top base his uh, himself... Or sorry, instead of trying to take out Boxer's forces above his own second base, he's moving his own forces in here to assault Boxer's second base. And he's got his rates up here as well. A little bit surprised Boxer isn't going in to attack those rates and doing a little bit of a scan. Got the flag for the Ever with the Ever logo. And I actually didn't realize that this was an outdoor uh, finals. It's not uncommon actually for the stadiums to be outdoors for the, um, for the finals for the old Star Leagues. And there is a ton of people there. Just absolute hundreds of people. And just to finish that thought, in case you guys were left hanging, what I was saying before about uh, the finals in Korea is that um, they actually, it's kind of like a traditional wedding where they actually have two sides and you sit in the, either the boxer side or the oof side or the, you know, if it's a team league, you sit in your team side of the stands. And so you have everyone cheering for one player on one side and everyone cheering for other player on the other side on the left and right of the stage. And Boxer has actually moved his tanks down. He's continuing. Uv has moved his base into, has moved that command center into the middle base to be able to continue mining without that high ground assault. And Boxer says, well, who cares? It doesn't have to be the high ground. I can still assault you here now that he is on the low ground. So, you know, some vultures or something could run up and try and deal with that situation. But look at this. Boxer is now under assault. Uh, from Uv's tanks. This is kind of crazy. It's going back and forth where both players are um, Both players are assaulting each other's second bases and now boxer is kind of funny Uv was forced to fall back from the base with, that had the high ground disadvantage to the internal base and boxer is being forced to fall back from the internal base into the other one, which has the, the high ground above it. That's a bit of a disadvantage. So will Uv be able to take advantage of that is what we're going to have to find out here. Uv has moved in with a lot of tanks, though, and definitely has forced Boxer back from this location. And that's partly because Boxer's tanks, some of them are across the map doing the same kind of thing. So, um, any case, we'll see what happens here. Um, both players um, facing off now outside of Boxer's expansion. Now, here's the thing. Uv is not mining at this base. He's completely ceased mining, and he's decided to to force the issue with Boxer and pushed forwards against Boxer rather than use his units to defend his own base. Um, and so Uv is now no longer mining. Boxer has moved his command center over to the right side and is now continuing to mine at that base. So um, things are looking pretty good for Boxer. Boxer has been mining at a second base for longer than Uv has. But, um, you know, 
if box and oof has taken out more of i think uh boxers units though so we'll see and there's a nice volley taking out two of boxers tanks that is actually really really bad um boxers didn't have position of those tanks as they were moving into into the spot and um Oof, just taking advantage of the fact that Boxer didn't have vision. He'd really needed like a building or something floating out there. Or his race moved a little bit farther out in order to be able to see it. These fans are so excited to be on camera. Look at their the camera panning across just an ocean of fans here to see this epic finals between these two players. The Cheater Terran versus the Emperor. The Teacher versus the Student. The Son versus the, the Father is, is what some people like to think of it as, you know. Um, sometimes people will call Oove, I think, the son of Boxer. Um, although I think they called they called MMA that later too in, in the Slayers era, right? So I don't know. Um, in any case, we have two starports out now for Oove. He has decided to keep up with the Wraith production. So it's a really, really interesting scenario where we have lots of Wraiths being produced on both sides. And, you know, it's like um, a rock, paper, scissors where you have, you know, Wraiths beating tanks... Tanks beating Goliaths and Goliaths beating Wraiths and hold that thought because we do have a little bit of harassment coming in here. I don't know if this is going to accomplish much though. The mines all get killed off before they can go off on the tanks. The tanks survive. Boxer resisting the harassment of Oove. But yeah, so you have this rock, paper, scissors between Wraiths, Goliaths, and tanks, right? But imagine you're playing rock, paper, scissors and you're throwing 30 hands at the same time, right? Or rather, you're throwing 30 hands over the course of 20 minutes, perhaps, of, of this game. Um, and so, you know, if you have more rocks, then the enemy has uh, uh, scissors. But you have more papers to, to outweigh the rocks. You know, your army composition, if your army composition is better suited to, to counter theirs, then you're going to win the overall battle. But... It's a constant ad adaptation of trying to build, okay, he's got more wraiths than me. I need to get some Goliaths to counter that that advantage. Or or try and get more wraiths, right? You could all just, also just overwhelm your opponent with more hands, right? If they throw 10 papers and you to throw 12, you still win. So um, both players are trying to decipher, what is my opponent building right now? What kind of forces are they getting? How can I counter them? While also, of course, trying to take a tactical advantage on the battlefield. So... Um, things have just already been kind of crazy. And you can see, this is interesting, that, that Uv has the map control. He still has his forces camped outside Boxer's base. And I believe he has the air control as well. So if there is ever a point where all of the Goliaths or, and Wraiths for Boxer are dead, then the Wraiths of Uv are just going to be able to clean up because I think they've just got too many Wraiths right now. It feels like he's been producing them more consistently. Boxers can transfer over production into more of the ground units. And um, uh, Uva's just taking complete control of the air. We can see there's two control groups of wraiths, whereas Boxer, we can almost... We, I didn't have time to count them there, but it looked like about 10 wraiths. So Boxer's basically kind of abandoned the, the wraith production. He's still going to have them. They're still going to be really important for spotting for his tanks. So we're probably going to see him you know, run the wraiths out, try and spot a little bit, run them back, because he doesn't want to lose them to Uva's wraiths. Now, let's take a look at the economic situation right now. Um, as we said before, you know, Uv was not mining at his uh, second base for a long time, but Uv is now mining at that base, and he's taken a third base. Now, the third base is a mineral only, and that's one of the reasons why we've seen this, this vulture harassment, because Uv has extra money just in the minerals. No, oh, hold that thought. Boxer's coming out here with a bunch of cloak rays. He's going to try and take some advantage by picking off tanks. Well, it's not expected, hoping to catch Uv while he's paying attention to something else. He does take out one tank. He's going after the engineering bay. The engineering bay is going to fall pretty quickly. But now Uv's wraiths are here. He's going to scan and go after it, and Boxer has way fewer wraiths, and his wraiths are going to get absolutely wiped out. Boxer cannot actually run, because if he runs, this is exactly what's going to happen. He's just going to get chased down and picked off. Um, huge, huge win there for Uv. I think Oof just took a commanding lead in this game. He's got an economic lead with the three bases to Boxer just having two. And now he has the complete air superiority. He has complete control of the air, which means he has the spotting advantage, which means that he has the ability to run in and pick off Boxer's tanks. A little, I think that was a little bit of a mistake. Maybe he didn't know how many race um, Oof had or something like that, but... Um, Boxer now has to depend entirely on Goliaths, and those Goliaths... Oh no, the mines! The Goliaths drag mines back into themselves, doing damage to that tank and losing all of the Goliaths. But now, Boxer doesn't have any anti-air. 
His Goliaths are dead. There's no turrets in this location. If Oof realizes this, he can dive in with all those raids and just take out so many tanks. Boxer, uh, luckily for him, realizes this and is going to fall back. Looks like Boxer has, has actually resumed production of those raids. He knows he needs something to try and combat the raids. Um, otherwise, uh, Oof's race would just run in and destroy his tank count. So this is um, getting kind of crazy, basically. Um, three, three starboards now. And this is something we've actually seen a lot in TVTs in this Star League is, you know, uh, uh, if a player gets behind on the Wraith count, sometimes we'll actually see them double down. Instead of just giving up and trying to go with Goliaths, they'll double down and they'll actually get one more starport above their opponent and try to um, just outdo their opponent. Because, you know, if you have two dozen Wraiths to their one dozen, you can get complacent, right? You can say, okay, well, I've got the Wraith superiority. I'm not going to keep building them. And you might get caught off guard. And that's exactly what might be happening here. Because let's see. I don't know if Oov has any other Wraiths around the map. We see his that he, about a dozen that he has left. And Boxer is trying to move out here. Boxer has been pinned in his base for a long time. But now he's moving out to try to assault this lower position. Try and move out on the map. He goes for the tanks first, which is interesting. Um, and then goes for the Goliath and the turret. He's going to establish this position. Now, Uv has got this 6 o'clock position base. And I think that's what Boxer is worried about. He knows that he cannot uh, let uh, Uv get that much map control that he takes so many bases. Um, that he's going to be able to take that. And actually, did, is that where Uv's command center went? I actually can't see if... It looks like maybe the command center that was on the top left base has now floated all the way down to this bottom middle one. And so that's where his third base is mining right now. So, Boxer says, hey, look, you know what? There's high ground all over this map. I'm going to take position right outside there. But Uv getting his tanks in a beautiful line right in a good position to spot there. Now, if Boxer has an evil number of forces... He will win the fight by having the high ground advantage uh, if he gets into the right position. But it's hard to put yourself at risk for a few moments while you move your tanks into position and seize them up. Um, so it's going to be difficult to see if that actually happens or not. Oof now taking another base at the 12 o'clock position. And now Boxer has moved around to the high ground above this base. Beautiful flanking maneuver here. The race are duking it out. Both players cloaking their race, having to pot shot each other amidst the cloak. Um... But, you know, if, if it's a classic, you know, broadside maneuver in naval warfare, if your opponent's units are in a line, you cross the T. And so Boxer, instead of engaging uh, parallel to Uv's tank line, has moved perpendicular and has taken out one of the tanks in the bottom. Uv has repositioned already, though. And now his, his tanks are in a position to fire uh, in a solid wave against the high ground on the bottom. Boxer could, of course, move in and... What is going on here? One of the I couldn't see which player that was, but that was someone drew a bus on a sign, and it looks like one of them was was driving the other one. The other one was like it might have been a student thing where Boxer was the teacher driving the school bus, and Oof was the student in the school bus. That was really funny. Um, any case, um, yeah. So Boxer still is in a good spot to actually uh, assault that six o'clock base. Um, you know, he could do that. Um. Oof is taking the 12... I'm sorry, this, I'm, uh, the 12 o'clock base, yeah. Um, so Boxer has to worry about that as well. Oof, you know, despite the fact that Boxer is making some really great tactical plays here, um, Oof is still maintaining an advantage on the map. He's still maintaining map control. He's still maintaining the economic advantage. Those tanks are still there? What the... <laughs> Why is Oof not... Hold that thought. Boxer running in for an assault in the middle. Oof is too spread out, and Boxer's taking advantage of it, running across the middle here with a lot of tanks, a few Goliaths for support, and he is going to wipe out a number of Oof's tanks. Oof had, two, you know, several tanks at the 6 o'clock position there. Oof had some, some stuff at the 12 o'clock position defending there, and he actually didn't have very much defending his contain in the middle. So Boxer focusing a lot of these units on the middle is going to push out and try and take control. He wants to take control of that inside five o'clock base so that he can maybe start mining from it eventually because he doesn't have a lot of other options he needs to take a new another base but he doesn't have control of any other bases of the map he needs to push out in order to take control of another base um and that's what he's trying to push out in the middle here this is actually a really crucial push for boxer even if he pushes into that six o'clock position which has been abandoned now by the way Oof realizes that the main force of boxer is in the middle and he's taking those tanks out of the six o'clock position to reinforce the middle which leaves the the six o'clock position vulnerable 
But look at that tank line there. So now we have this is the this is the core of Terran versus Terran. Oh no, the Goliath actually suiciding out there by accident. Um, they were not on hold position, and so I think one of them took some fire, and so they decided to run out to their deaths, as Goliaths are wont to do. Um, but yeah, so Boxer has a little bit of a uh, possibility. Okay, those tanks are finally taken out. Um, the ones that he originally put on the on the high ground on the left of the map, like an hour ago, whenever that was, um, and eventually assaulted the inside base. They've finally been taken out. I'm surprised that wasn't taken out earlier. Would have just, like I said, taken a couple vultures to do so. And now Boxer is trying to expand into the middle here. He hasn't quite taken complete control of that inner five o'clock base position, but he, I think he feels like he has enough control over it that he can he can move in there and start to try and mine from it if he pushes out a little bit farther. But Uv, like I said, has completely reinforced that spot. He doesn't want to lose it. He knows that he's got Boxer in a little bit of a chokehold, and if he can just keep the pressure on for a little bit longer, Boxer will get starved out of oxygen and will not be able to survive. And here's a nice little drop by Boxer on the high ground above the six o'clock position. There's so much high ground on this map. Every base is, pretty much every base is vulnerable to an attack from a high ground position. And that's why we saw the turrets on the top there. Ooh, the racer there to support that one tank. But uh, Boxer's racer there as well. And it looks like he did actually take out the tank with his own tanks. Moved in four, and even though Boxer had the high ground uh, advantage, the four tanks moving in there was able to do enough. And now the rates are actually going to assault here. The tanks take out the turret, though. A little bit of danger for Boxer's race. Where are Oof's rates? The scan goes off. Oof engaging with his own rates as well as the Goliath, but he didn't engage with the rates and the Goliath at the same time. And so he didn't actually take as much of an advantage as he could have. So Boxer forced to fall back, but not before doing significant damage to Oof's SCV line. <clears throat> Um, let's go, let's go ahead and take stock here. Boxer looks like mining at that third base. Mining as natural up at the top, but, uh, not mining his main. I think both pairs have mined out their mains already. And Boxer has almost mined out that other position. So if he actually, if he loses, if he mines out the right side base before he can take control of this base that we're looking at right now, and he's got one tank in position, but it gets taken out by the raids. The Goliaths are doing some damage along with the tanks on that command center. Boxer needs to hold that middle. He needs to do something to hold that middle. I'm not sure why he's not moving tanks into position right now to try and take that out. Because if he loses that pos that position, in a few minutes when he mines out his third, he's going to be basically not mining. So he needs to take control of this position with what he has right now. Um, otherwise, he's just going to be in deep trouble. You can see he's mining the gas from that base already. Here we go. Now he's moving in with his tanks. He's going to take out that turret. He's going to try and take control of this position. Um, it, this is a really open, wide area. This is a really, really wide area. So it's possible to do a flank on these forces. Boxer, look at this. Just inching his tanks forward a little bit. Oh, no. The scan goes off for Oof. He takes first blood on the tanks. The race come in now for Boxer. The Goliaths push them back. And Boxer's tanks have been pushed back. This is actually a really bad position for Boxer right now. I think uh, Boxer might actually lose the game in a short period of time because right now, um, uh, Uv is pushing it on this base. He's assaulting the command center, and um, it's just, just not looking good for for Boxer. He's, 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 ar he's already having to repair that command center, basically. Um, in order to keep it alive, to mine from it. And now here, uh, Oof comes in. He's moved his tanks forward. They are within position to assault the SV line now. And they're going to take out the command center very quickly. Boxer needs to just... Oh, no! The command center! He doesn't lift it or repair it. And the last volley for the tanks goes off and kills the command center. Boxer is in deep, deep, deep trouble right now. Um, this is not good at all. Um, for Boxer, he's probably going to lose this game in just a few minutes because Oof has cleaned up the 6 o'clock position. He's cleaned up the 12 o'clock position. He's mining his third at the top left now that he originally tried to take at the very beginning of the game. Boxer is going in here to try and take out these tanks, uh, try to assault the 12 o'clock position, but it's all up to this spot right here. This could be the final battle, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're seeing Oof move in here, and if Boxer loses all of his forces, he's going to be forced to concede, and there's the GG. Coming out for Boxer. Oov is going to take a 1-0 lead, ladies and gentlemen, um, in this series. Wow.
boxer, and you can see him shaking his head there. Uh, just not able to, to take enough map control, basically, right? Um, he just couldn't hold it together. And Oof is going to take game number one. Uh, a really, really strong, strong showing by both these players, but not quite enough. So, wow. Oof taking an early lead in the series, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just basically out macroing Boxer there, you know, having a, a really, really strong lead um, in, in the mid game, but not even early game. It's really interesting how Boxer had kind of control of everything at the at the start of the of the match, right? He um, he stopped Oof from mining his second base, and then when he moved the second base, he stopped Oof from mining that again. Um, Boxer initially had Wraith control, but Oof was able to push back with the Goliaths. And, but after that, once Oof kind of had those Goliaths in play, he just macroed like crazy and was able to take the game in the long run just by maintaining map control. Boxer eventually just starved out. He just couldn't get extra bases and Oof had too many more bases for too long of a time. Despite the kind of fun harassment by Boxer, um, Oof just wasn't able to, uh, or sorry, Boxer just wasn't able to, uh, you know, <clears throat> make an impact on the economy. Oof ended up getting more stuff. And um, yeah, so th uh, that's going to do it for game number one. Let's go ahead and get back to our score screen and we can update that. Let's see if this works. Oh, I got to... <laughs> the titles are, are should be appearing later. So in any case, um, let's go ahead and... Chalk up a win for... Let's see if this works. There we go. Win on game number one for Oov. He's going to take an early lead in this series. <clears throat> and um, I just want to make sure my chat is functioning because... Oh, my chat is not functioning. My computer is frozen. I was like, no one's chatting. Why is no one saying anything? It's because my, uh, my second computer where I have... Um, <laughs> Where I have all my, uh, where I'm looking at the chat, I kept, I would glance over at chat occasionally, and I'd be like, "Oh, no one's saying anything. I guess these games aren't that entertaining." Um, <laughs> but it was just that my computer was frozen, so that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, in any case, yeah. So um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of a pause here to um, make sure that gets going. I want to make sure that. The, uh, my other computer is working, so just give me a second here. All right, and actually, I don't have the music on this screen either, do I? So you have the music there. Cool. All right, so just give me a second to uh, catch my breath a little bit here and get my other computer up and running again. <clears throat> All right. All right. Now I think we're back in business. <clears throat> Chat is still loading. <clears throat> all right. Hey, all right. Sounds good. All right, let's uh, go back to the webcam screen then. And we'll chat for a second here while I catch up on what's been going on. All right. And, uh, oh, well, thank you very much. Thanks for the cast. Forgot to mute the other stream. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. So thank you, Dynasty, for the bits, and thank you, Quiet's You. Uh, hopefully it's not a commentary on the fact that I keep having issues with my uh, issues with my microphone and different things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and queue up game number two. We're going to get right into game number two here in just a minute. Uh, I don't think we need to go back over the... Um... <clears throat> I don't think we need to go back over the, the stats or anything like that. But um, Oof taking an early lead here. So now I want to just touch back on, you know, what's at stake for these players real quick for a minute. Because, again, you know, uh, this is kind of Boxer's chance to show himself. But Oof, you know, imagine you're in Oof's shoes right now, right? Or not right now, but 16 years ago. And you're going up. You've been playing really well. You've been dominating everything. You had a little bit of a hiccup against July Zerg, but you're still extremely strong against Zerg players. You're basically one of the best players, if not the best player 
in StarCraft right now, right? Um, and now you have to go up against your teacher. This is the guy who brought you into the fold, right? This is the guy who pulled you off the street, you know, and said, here, let me give you a place to sleep and some food and I'll train you in the ways of my StarCraft foo. And now you may have learned it better than your teacher, right? And so there's a little bit of an interesting situation where like, Uv is probably, he wants to win, right? He wants to prove himself to the world. But at the same time, you also kind of don't want to embarrass your teacher who gave you everything in front of the world, right? So, I don't know. It's it's kind of an interesting situation uh, there. But anyway, uh, thank you for the follows as well. The few of you that have been following in the last uh, hour that we've been streaming. Um, <clears throat> yeah, nice Yamatos, right? I've got StarCraft sounds for all my alerts on uh, on Twitch right now. So, but I do have them paused uh, during the games because I just I want people to be able to focus on the games. But thank you so much for those uh, those donations. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. Um, hey, we got even one more follower. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and jump into game number two here, and we'll get right into it. So again, game number two is going to be on Pelinor. Oh man, Pelinor, the shenaniganicious map is going to be interesting. So um, yeah, I think without further ado, let's go ahead and get into game number two. All right, here we go. Game number two between Slayer's Boxer and I Love Oov. We're going to have Oov being the green Terran. <clears throat> He's going to be in the top right of the map. So this is interesting. I'm already noticing something about this. There he is wearing an SK Telecom shirt. Both these players. Um... On the same team as well so like not only is it you know a, a teacher student scenario but they're actually also teammates so it's kind of interesting that we actually had two teammates playing against each other in the third place match and now we have two teammates playing against each other in the finals which is it's it's very very rare um to have that situation for for teammates to be playing in the finals so um a lot on the line here but um yeah this is gonna be pretty cool again let's have uh, let's remember that Oog is up one zero in this series so boxer has to come back if you get down to a 2-0 deficit it's it's very very difficult to come back from boxer needs to kind of like win this game in order to get tempo at the very least i think this is a really crucial game for boxer in you know the long run of this of this match basically uh, of the the whole entire series but we'll see if he can pull it off it's not impossible to come back from an 0-2 deficit so um, any case, so what I was going to say is I noticed that these guys are in cross positions right now. Um, they're in cross positions. And so what that means is it actually makes it harder for shenanigans to work because it's a longer distance, um, especially if you're doing some land shenanigans, land anigans, perhaps. Um, you know, it's a long distance by land because you, you can't just go straight across the middle. You have to walk all the way around this big kind of islandy thing in the middle where there's these like middle expansions. And um, so if you're trying to do like a vulture rush or something like that, it's gonna it's gonna be a long time for your vultures to get across the map. And that guy, man, that guy, I don't know if you saw him there with the ramen noodles. That is the life right there. Sitting in, 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 amidst a bunch of StarCraft fans at a giant finals arena outside, soaking up the fresh air, eating some ramen noodles, Man, that sounds good. Uh, in any case, uh, yeah, so we have both players scouting uh, counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, as some people might call it. Both players, it looks like, are, are I believe, walling off their choke. No, okay, so Uv. I'm sorry, let me let me get straight who these players are. Uh, yeah, so Uv is the green Terran. Yeah, Uv is the green Terran at the top right of the map. Uh, boxer is going to be the yellow turn at the bottom left. So, um, one player walling off their natural, or sorry, walling off their choke point. The other player kind of leaving it open 
and it's Boxer is the one that's leaving the open. He's made two Marines, and they're actually running on the map trying to catch the L. He knows where the SCV is coming from. Can he? Oh, he doesn't micro, though. He could have stutter step microed and possibly killed that SCV before it was able to get into his base. But instead, this late last scout is going to get in and spy exactly what's going on. Now, Boxer has put down a depot in his uh, choke point, but it doesn't look like he's going to wall it off. It looks like that's actually just going to be... Um, <clears throat> that's actually just... Gonna, oh, and he does actually find, uh, kill off... Oh, wow! He cancels his second factory and builds two starports! Here's the shenanigans, ladies and gentlemen. This is the shenanigans that I was talking about. He shows Uv the second factory, cancels it as soon as the SCV dies, and instantly builds two starports. This is going to get crazy very, very soon. Um... And again, this is a good map for air units because there's a lot of ridges and stuff. Every map in this entire map pool is good for air units. So um, this could work very, very effectively. It's still a long distance for him to go across the map, but it's a lot closer by air than it is by land. And so we'll see what happens here. Now, Boxer, like I said, was building some buildings at his choke point. He's probably going to be able to be prepared for these vultures that are coming across the map. And this is, I mean, if Boxer doesn't do something with his raids, he's going to... He's going to be in trouble because, um, as you can see, there's two factories going down. Uv is not looking to expand or anything like that. It's early expansion is very rare on this map anyway. But, um, yeah, the fact that uh, that Uv is going for two, two uh, machine shops, which is leading me to believe he's probably going to be focusing on vultures and getting mines. Um, couple old, Usually when they focus... I don't know who those were exactly, but usually when they focus on old people in the audience... And hold that thought, actually, because... Boxer's door was not actually very complete. It, it was more like a, a, I don't know what you would call it. It was the door was open. He he built a little bit of a door, but then he left it hanging wide open. These vultures get right in. He's actually going to be able to kill off some SVs. He hasn't actually gone over to see these starports though. And what is what happened to his vultures? Did the vulture die? We need to see the vultures. Did the vultures die? I didn't actually see if both of them died. It looked like they might have died. I don't know if Uv actually saw those starports and I actually I was so busy thinking about it trying to remember that I didn't actually see if they just showed if he had if he was getting an armory right now so we'll see if that happens cloak is being upgraded right now and boxer actually canceling his machine shop in order to move his factory over is probably going to block up his entrance I believe um no he's actually got an engineering bay blocking the entrance where's the factory going then this is insane. Okay, Uv does have Goliaths out. Um, does have Goliaths out right now. So um, he, he could theoretically fend these off, but Cloak is going to be upgraded, and I don't think I don't think Uv has a commsat station right now. So as long as the Cloak is... Okay, he does have an academy. He's probably building one at the moment. It is building. It's halfway complete, but he doesn't actually currently have any uh, commsat. Can he actually kill off these Goliaths? Before Comsat finishes, he's going to go straight for the SCV line. He's not going to go for the Goliaths first. He's killed off one SCV. He's going to kill off a second one. The Comsat is about to finish. The Goliaths are in position. Boxer falls back to a spot where the Goliaths... Now here's the scan. It's going to be crucial. Can he kill off enough wraiths with this one scan to be worthwhile? The scanner is completed. He's waiting for the right moment. He wants to make sure he gets maximum damage done with this scan. He's probably waiting for the Goliaths to be in position. He actually doesn't even scan. He doesn't scan. He doesn't waste the scan. Um, and maybe thinking, okay, if I use this one scan... Now he scans? Okay, well, Uv, I guess, decided to waste his one scan because he waited until Boxer was over this ridge in a bad position, uses the scan. Now, those rates are actually probably low on energy for Cloak anyway, so it's not uh, super, super crucial. But, um, uh, yeah, Boxer's going to fall back to his main, possibly worried about a counterattack with Vultures or something like that. Um, he did scout that... Uv was making a second base as well, a second command center. And he also, of course, spotted the starport, so seeing that Uv was getting the same thing. Um, he saw the control tower complete. And there's, you're not, I guess you could just get the control tower for drop ships, theoretically. So he doesn't necessarily know that Uv is going for wraiths. But Boxer has his own scanner as well, just in case. So he's going to be in good shape if that happens. <clears throat> and there's some, some, uh... anyway. So, um, yeah, Uv is now push pushing out onto the map here a little bit um, with some Goliaths. He's taken his, his second base. 
And, oh, he's going to lose a couple SCVs that were over here scouting. Um, kind of seeing if Boxer was getting a second base himself. Boxer is not getting a second base yet right now. I don't know if he has commands that are building in his main. But, um, yeah, it looks like Oov again, you know, is not quite going to suffer enough from the cleverness of Boxer. And it looks like he's going to take an economic advantage into the mid game. So, you know, things shaping up very similarly to the first game where Boxer did something clever, got a little bit of a tactical advantage, using the map to his advantage, using some strategy, but Oof just, it bounced right off of him, right? And it wasn't able to accomplish enough. And so I don't know if Boxer is really going to be able to, to do much here. This is interesting. Uh, Oof running some Goliaths over above uh, Boxer's natural, or into Boxer's natural, above Boxer's main. But it's going to get shut down by the one tank on the low ground there in a nice spot. Boxer counterattacking, though, knows that Oov is trying to go for this expansion. He's running his tanks over here. He's brought SCVs as well to build turrets. He does not have the Goliaths, but he does have uh, Wraiths. And actually, look at this. Um, SCV is being pulled to try and kill off these tanks. It looks like the tanks... One of the tanks is going to go down. And now he's got Cloak Wraiths. Both players coming in with their Wraiths and scanning. If uh, Boxer win this fight he, and holds this position, it could be crucial. He does! Uh, wait, it's actually hard to tell whose wraiths are whose. He's trying to repair his tank. Actually, one was trying to repair and the other SCV was Oof's SCV trying to, to kill it. And the tank does go down. So that is actually really, really crucial. If Boxer had held that position, kept his tanks alive, and gotten the wraith advantage, he would have been in a superior position... But instead, he loses that spot. Now, he does still have the Wraith advantage right now. And, oh, is he going to be able to get a free kill? He does almost get a free kill. Scans and is able to get another kill. He's going to polish off the last Wraith. Not quite. The scan is a little bit out of range for that spot. He didn't know where those Wraiths were going to go. And, uh, of course, Oov running away from the scan position as well. So, Boxer still does have the tactical advantage here. But here's the thing. As we're seeing right here, it's not stopping Oov from mining. And you need to stop Oof from mining, otherwise the Cheater Terran is going to get a bigger army than you. And in fact, a bigger Air Force as well. So we can see that Oof has three starports, which he's building out of right now. So, oh, hold. Is uh, Boxer going to be able to take this spot? Um, Boxer's pushing in here again, bringing in the Wraiths to cover him so that if SCVs or Goliaths theoretically come out to try and kill these tanks, he can bring in his Wraiths to try and deal with it. He's holding position on the bottom with the Siege Tech. And, oh, hold that thought. Uh, a little bit of a counterattack might be happening. Um, look at this. He's baiting the SCVs out with this one tank. And, the, and now the Wraiths are killing it off. The tanks from the low ground going to work as well. Boxer was trying to take that second position, but he sees the Vultures coming in. And just goes ahead and lifts it to to stop that from happening. And Boxer it has actually now retaken this position outside of Oov's second base. So uh, Boxer might be able to take this out and take an economic advantage after all. Oov is not repairing that, and the three tanks are pelting away at it, and he's finally going to lift it at the last second, but it might burn down if he's not careful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like he's going to float that off to the corner and um, and repair it, theoretically. But, oh, hold the... Uh, now, actually, Oov coming in uh, on the second base of Boxer, taking out some SCVs, and he's actually going to fall back once those SCVs fall back to a spot where the tank on the low ground can fight for them. But this is kind of, this is insane. I thought this series was going to be insane. And it is delivering, ladies and gentlemen. Because both players are assaulting each other's expansions in different ways. Both players keeping the supply count down of, of each other. And also keeping the economy down of each other. Boxer's trying to sneak a base in the top left, though. And it uh, looks like that a base did get repaired. But then the race came in and cleaned up every single SCV. So, Oov is actually... I think Oov is actually behind at this point because Boxer has been able to maintain all of his SCVs. Um, he's been able to maintain his SCV count. I don't think he's. I think he's only lost four or five SCVs to the Vulture harassment. And Oov, you know, this time doesn't quite have the same map control that he was able to gain in the mid game and the previous game. And look at this. This is kind of interesting. He's actually parked his command center in a spot where his SCVs can kind of pseudo distance mine. And not have to worry about vultures and the tanks on the low ground can actually protect them which you know why not just put a tank on the high ground i'm not sure um but anyways but it is actually a good spot for him to mine gas from that base too if he wants to which i it was, would be highly recommended given the fact that 
the race and Goliaths and tanks all take gas and they're going to be the most important units in this uh, situation. <clears throat> so I give you a second to get a drink of water here. Guys, I've gotten old. I've gotten old. I'm a I'm a boomer caster now. I have to I have to I can't just screw my AI computer for six hours straight anymore like I could when I was uh, in my twenties, <laughs> early thirties. I need to take more breaks. Um, in any case, uh, Boxer, like I said, is still just in a really great position right now. Now this base has been discovered. He's building turrets, but the turrets aren't going to do any good. And he's actually losing a lot of SCVs as well. So this is not not the best situation. But I believe Boxer still has control of Oof's second base. Um, Oof is now running across the map with these vultures. The tanks spot them, but the tanks obviously are going to be a lot slower. Okay, so Boxer has cleared out his second base now um, with that situation. Um... Sorry, just trying to look at something here. All right, um, on the on, my, on another screen, real quick. Um, getting set up for the next one. Um, a little bit in the background. I am a one-person show here. It's uh, unfortunately I can't just be a caster. That was one of the great things about casting in Korea, by the way, is I could just I didn't have to worry about very much at all. I could just go and cast, and and in this case, I'm the caster and the producer and the researcher and the commentator and uh the host all at the same time um so apologies that i have had some hiccups with the production here a little bit but in any case we do have um Uv now kind of being out on the map a little bit more with these vultures also with his rates i'd be curious if, if we could somehow get like a count of the race because i believe Uv might have overtaken boxer in the wraith count again just again going one up on oh hold that what's going on Okay, it looks like he was going to try and transfer SCVs down to uh, a, another base, but it's been discovered by Boxer. And Boxer getting Valkyries! Boxer's getting Valkyries. Beautiful, beautiful counter to the mass race. He's like, all right, well, you know what? If I have less rates than you, but I have Valkyries to counter it, I can still win the air battle. And that is super important because if you can win the air battle and keep a couple rates alive, Uv doesn't really have a lot of Goliaths right now. So if you win the air battle then you can and <laughs> so before boxer put turrets at that base and vultures came in this case boxer put a tank at that base and rates came so uh not good situation for that base that base has um been under constant assault but look at this oof is still not mining at his expansion it looks like he's floated that command center into his main so so boxer is actually just been able to maintain enough map control that he's just in good shape. Oh, I think he might have shown those Valkyries um, to that barracks that was sitting there on the ground. Um, not sure Uv would have had to, to check immediately to spot that because he did turn around pretty quickly. But um, yeah, Uv is just uh, not in good shape right now. He doesn't really have a strong economy. He's just His main is about to mine out. Um, he is assaulting this side base though, so Boxer's going to lose another command center over here. And those SCVs, instead of trying to repair it, are just like, well, we're just going to get as many minerals as we can before the command center dies and before we die, because they will die to this small force. So Boxer now losing the top left base, but Boxer has his natural up. And I don't think Uv has gotten his natural up this entire time. And uh, I think that was Uv's dad there. That's what I was going to try and say earlier, is usually when they show the old people in the audience, um, it's the parents of the players. We often see the parents at the finals supporting their kids. It's kind of an interesting world where, you know, in Korea, it's actually can be a career. I guess it can be outside of Korea as well nowadays. But in 2004, it was only in Korea that it was possible for it to be a career to, um, you know, play esports and win enough tournaments to make enough money. And here we go. Now we go in and the rates are coming in to protect against this, this tank. And now the Valkyries come in. He doesn't scan, though. Or maybe he didn't scan quickly enough. Or maybe it was just that those uh, Valkyries couldn't get into the right position. 
Um, this is uh, balanced on a, on a knife's edge, this base, if this base survives or not. The race are there for Uv. The uh, boxers, Goliaths are actually here as well. There's one turret. He scans and goes after the cloak rays. He's going in with the Valkyries. Both players scanning and trying to target each other's rays. And it looks like the Valkyries are going to succeed. Boxer has two wraiths as well that still survive. Boxer has air superiority. And with those four Valkyries surviving, Uv will not be able to retake the air. Boxer is king of the Air Force right now, and I don't think there's anything Uv could do about it. I mean, he could try and get Valkyries of his own, but that, what good does that do when the Valkyries cannot fire down? The Valkyries are there to kill off the race so that your own race can kill off the ground units so that your own ground units can do the real damage. But um, with the Valkyries taking the air, Uv is going to be forced to just deal with the ground. Now, Uv is going for a counterattack. He says, all right, you know what? If you've invested that much money into four Valkyries... You might not have a ground army that can stand up to mine. Sending these tanks across the map. Now, crucially, he only has a handful of Goliaths. Uh, if Boxer continues producing wraiths, or if he kills off those Goliaths, then Boxer's air superiority will win him the day, and will win him the battle, and will win him the game, and will tie up the series. Here comes Oof's counterattack. He's going in. He's sieging up. There's dropships incoming, though. The wraiths are coming in. The Valkyries are, are there for support as well. He's dropping stuff all over Oof's forces. This could be the end of the game if he eliminates this force, but Oof's forces are fighting strong. He's got one tank left, but it goes down, and Boxer has taken out Oof's counterattack completely, and that could be... If it's not the game yet, that is definitely, uh, I think, the deciding point in this game. Boxer has now taken a commanding lead. He's secured his second base as well, so he can continue mining. But here's the thing, though. He didn't actually kill off that middle base. He still needs to do that in order to... He needs to translate this, this advantage into a kill onto his economy in order to actually accomplish something with this. Uh, Uv is trying to defend this third base desperately in the middle of planting tanks on the low ground. Boxer has his tanks on the high ground, though. And the Goliaths as well doing more support. And it looks like he is able to take out the low ground tanks. And the building as well. The the Valkyrie is just doing some damage there. And he's running in with Val with Vultures to kill off forces at the second base of Uv as well. Boxer knows that he used, needs to turn this tactical advantage into an economic advantage if he's going to survive in the long run and win this game. And he's doing just that. The mines go off on top of those tanks as well. Killing every single one of them. Uv has no ground forces to speak of right now. But the Cheater Terran still has a few in his pocket, but he's losing so much stuff. He's going to lose this third base. Um, and he's still under a little bit of assault at his second base as well. Boxer is playing this absolutely beautifully. The Valkyries were just a genius 5 million IQ Q move in order to counter the air advantage. I mean, we saw that Uv had three times as many rates, but Valkyries are just so, so strong as anti-air um, in an, you know an area of effect that... Um, he was able to take out that one that main advantage that Uv had, and now he's coming in for, for a drop at the second base. If Uv loses this base and cannot counter this force immediately, he will lose the game. Boxer now assaulting the SUVs. SUV is being pulled out of that supply line into the forces while Uv drops his own tanks here. Can he take it out? It looks like he is going to take it out. He is going to take it out, and Boxer not able to kill off that third base just yet. I'm sorry, the second base just yet. Uv keeping his second base. For the moment, um, yeah, things not looking good at all for Uv though. He's managed to secure that second base, uh, or rather keep it, I should say. Um, but um, he's still not looking good. He's still not looking good. Now, he, Boxer is trying to expand. It looks like in the bottom right, as kind of a sneaky expansion there. I think Uv found it um, at some point. Uh, we saw some SCVs battling, but I didn't catch the colors there. Um, look at his Valkyries just running in. Gutsy Valkyries. Um, they do survive. It looks like he lost one Valkyrie there, which I don't know if that was worth it exactly, but I think he killed off some dropships. And so that's actually pretty crucial. Boxer now just kind of putting some tanks out on the top left area of the map. Now, okay, so this is Boxer's new base that he's trying to establish as a sneaky base, but the Vultures say, nope, not going to happen. And Boxer immediately cancels it. Um, he knows he's not going to retain that. So Boxer is still struggling to get a third base up. And that's really, you know... He hasn't killed Uv's second base. He hasn't gotten his own third base up and running and secured. And so he still doesn't have that economic advantage that he needs here. Um, and he's loading up some dropships here. One of those dropships, very interestingly, is a very low health. 
It's actually the, the lead dropship, the direction he's going, but he's probably going to change directions and go north, making it not the lead dropship, which might be why he arranged it that way. Um, anyway, Boxer trying to maintain control of the middle here. Let's see. And actually, he's moved over. He is mining at his inner main semi-expansion, I guess. Five dropships now for Boxer here. Are we going to see a doom drop, ladies and gentlemen? Is he going to go straight for the throat? Go into the main, drop everything. The Valkyries will be there to make sure that uh, Oof cannot counter drop on top of his forces. I don't think Oof has any turrets in the main. Boxer's positioning in the middle here. He's falling back. What is he worried about? He's deciding not to go in after all. Being a little bit cautious here. <clears throat> yeah, Boxer falling back a little bit here. It looks like he's trying to hide his forces as well. Keeping him on top of the ridges so they wouldn't be spotted by anything below. All right. What is he waiting for, though? He's waiting for something specific. He's waiting for the right moment to go in with this force. Or maybe he's just posturing it around the map and hoping for Oov to make a move so he can counterattack it. That might be the situation as well. Maybe he's hoping to catch Oov unseized or, or maybe catch him sieged without enough air support um, and just drop all on top of him or something along those lines. Um, so Boxer's actually fallen back. I thought he was going to go for a huge drop, but he's fallen back with that force. He's got, remember, he's got, his ground army looks thin, but he's got a lot of stuff in those dropships. And he's, of course, does the Valkyrie still as well. He might, might do well to repair some of those. Um, for some reason, it's really strange. In the early days of uh, StarCraft, you, you didn't see people repair, t repair their Terran units very much at all. Like, it was very, very rare. Even if there was a bunch of tanks on low hit points, they wouldn't repair them, even though it's an efficient thing to do. But I don't know. It's just... Anyway, but that's none of my business. Or Kermit the Frogs, I guess. There we see Oov looking intent, focused, macroing like crazy here. Um, Boxer still struggling to try and get a third base somewhere on the map. Vultures. <clears throat> Excuse me, Fulcher's posturing as well. Had to take another drink of water. Um, okay, so it looks like Oov does have some stuff in his main, by the way. We're seeing a scan that Boxer actually sees the layout of the main as well. And I think he saw that there were tanks there too. So Oov is not completely vulnerable to a drop. And it possibly because he knows that Boxer has all of these dropships. So he's in, in good shape there. Um... Wow. Anyways, I, I'm kind of waiting for something to happen. Both players are just kind of like, you know, it's in a situation where um, either player, if they make a wrong move right now and they lose their army, they're going to lose the game. And this is such a crucial situation for both players right now. I'm really hoping that we can get a shot of the expansions that are going up. Okay, here we go. This is what I was hoping for. Boxer does have um, this expansion in the middle. It's not an island. I don't think it's an island expansion. On this map, I could be wrong, but I think you can walk there. Um, it's just a really strange route to go there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm looking now, and it's just uh, a, a very weird route to get to that. Oh, actually, maybe it is an island expansion. I'm sorry. There. Uh, so you're. I'm, oh, I'm looking at the map on another screen right now. It is an island expansion, but it's just. It's a really long island that you can get to from other parts of the. Basically, anywhere in the middle of the map can get there. So, um, so. That's why we saw him moving his SCVs over there with a, uh, a dropship. We've only seen players take that expansion, the, one of those expansions in the middle, like once this entire Star League, so I wasn't really too sure about how that was going to work. But um, anyway, Boxer is able to get that. If he builds some turrets there, actually, well, I mean, I don't know if Oof is going to try and bother building air units, so may, that, that island expansion might be just safe. Oof now deciding he wants to make a move, though. Boxer trying to take the left side of the map. He's got an expansion on the left. Oov is pushing out. He knows he needs to clamp down on Boxer's economy. Oov's economy is not in very good shape right now. Um, and so he needs to shut down Boxer's economy. And our maintain an advantage. Here comes the dropships coming. Oh, no! Boxer didn't know his force. Oh, no! Oh, my goodness. Boxer may have just lost the game right there. He didn't know Oov's forces were there. He ran his dropships through that area on move command and lost three dropships worth of units. An epic fail that could have lost him the game. I think Boxer had an advantage in this game. He could have taken it and tied up the series right then and there. With Oov moving out, he could have dropped his units on top of Oov's while Oov was moving into position, but instead, Boxer is stuck, and he's going to lose another dropship! He loses all of his dropships! 
Boxer has one drop ship left. I don't know if there's anything in those last two. Now it's possible. It's possible that Boxer didn't have anything inside those drop ships. And he didn't just instantly lose the game right there. But even if he didn't, having those drop ships in play to drop on top of the enemy tanks and Goliaths is a huge, huge advantage that Boxer has that he no longer has. He's lost four of his five drop ships that he made that he had earlier. And again, those are old drop ships. You know, oh, he's gonna lose the Valkyries too! Oh no! Boxer is falling apart here, just kind of being haphazard with his units. Basically, Oof just sat in his base macroing for a long time, and Boxer got a little complacent. And now that Oof is out on the map, Boxer is not keeping very good track of where uh, Oof is. And, uh, oh, whoa! A huge mine hit actually doing a lot of damage to, to Oof's tank out, though. Oof just lost four tanks to mines. Is that going to be enough to make up for the fact that those dropships have been killed off? It all depends on if there were units in those dropships or not. I do not know if there were units in those dropships. Um, we can't get a supply count or anything like that. So if if there were not units in those dropships, then I think Boxer might be able to do something in this game still. He might still be in it because we've seen that he's kind of spread out his units around different places. Um, he's got a few tanks at a couple different expansions, you know, for example. So he doesn't have a unified force. And he does... Okay, actually, let's, let's see. He's got one, two, three, four, seven, eight or nine tanks there. And three or four tanks at one of the expansions. So let's see if we can get a, a shot of Oov's army at some point and see how many tanks that Oov has. Because Boxer may actually, after killing off those tanks with mines... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Yeah, they're actually... Boxer has a couple more tanks in play. And he's actually rebuilt his dropships as well. Um, a couple of them. So he's up to three dropships now. So Boxer... I mean, the thing is... Here's the thing. Boxer, he, he lost some stuff. But... Uh, he's had more bases than Oov for longer, and so it may not matter that he lost some stuff if he can rebuild more stuff than, than Oov has. Um, I, I'm, I, Oov, I think he must have... It's, it's really hard to see the pixels on this game. Again, my apologies that the video quality is so terrible on, uh, on the, these old VODs, but they're the only VODs that we have to cast from, so apologies for that. It's not my fault, but that means it's hard for me sometimes to see what's going on on the map as well. But it looks like Oov actually has the top left base, which I didn't realize he had before. Um, so that's uh, not the best situation for... Uh, sorry, so it's, what I mean is it's not as bad of a situation for Oov as I thought because he has that base. And here we come, four dropships dropping into the natural expansion of Oov actually. Oov does have some forces below this. And that's why Boxer is moving his tanks north. They're going to be able to kill off all the SCVs at this base. Oov now has dropship of his own. Looks like he's going to let that base go and just let it burn down. Let the SCVs die. And that is gone. So Oov now is mined out in his main, by the way. And there's the GG coming from Oov. Boxer has done it. I don't know if it was just the economic advantage that he had for most of the game. Or if it was the fact that, um, you know... Boxer just he just didn't have the units in those dropships as well. I after all, and he actually didn't lose that much. But Boxer was able to out macro Oof, which is kind of crazy. Um, Boxer is able to out macro Oof, and that is not an easy feat to accomplish, ladies and gentlemen. Um, wow. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, assume that. Um, Boxer just must not have had anything inside those dropships because otherwise, um, you know, that would have been too big of a blow for Boxer to lose four dropships worth of units. But then we went back to his army and he had a bunch of tanks and Goliaths still. So I think those dropships were probably empty. Um, we'll never know, I guess. But um, I don't see Boxer winning that game if those dropships are full of units. So... Uh, I think it's just really just unlikely that they were full because Boxer then just out macroed him. And again, Boxer is just such a tactical genius. You know, Oov is, is, is very tactically sound. He has good tactics. He has good strategy, right? But Boxer is just the highest IQ StarCraft player possibly ever. He's just, I mean, some of the creative stuff that, ha that people now do regularly or know how to do, Boxer invented, right? And if you, if you don't believe me, just go watch... A boxer highlight video on YouTube from the old days when he invented all this crazy micro wraiths and marines and stuff like that. Um, 
So his intelligence and his his execution is just really really cool, and that won him this game. You know, he was able to move in in the right tactical situations. He got Valkyries. I said it at the time, and I'll say it again. Those Valkyries, I think, won him the game because uh, Uv had such an advantage in the air air battle that. Um, you know, basically, Boxer was going to end up losing. He didn't have enough Goliaths to combat the race. Uh, if he if he lost the air battle, he was going to lose the ground battle. So he got a few Valkyries, and that was the perfect, perfect counter. Very, very efficient strategy to counter that. So, um, in any case, yeah. Very, very crazy. Yeah, and Boxer, Boxer was trying to get bases up all around the map at different spots here and there. Um, and... Uh, you know, it wasn't working. Oof was just really being really good at um, kind of keeping track of where those bases were, running in vultures and stopping them, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, Boxer just able to to do it regardless. Um, in any case, uh, it looks like... So again, I have the alerts turned off and I'm going to go ahead and turn them back on again. So thank you very much. Kung Kung Piss Tank. <laughs> Kung Piss. <What? laughs> I, I don't even know. How to, there's so many different angles, so many dimensions to that username. That is just, it's just really interesting. Anyway, so thank you very much for that. And uh, hey, we got Merker in the house as well. Thank you very much, Merker. I appreciate the five dollar tip. Thank you everybody for that. And whoa, we just had a, a raid from Hazel. Thank you so much, Hazley Nut. If you guys um, don't know Hazley Nut, she's she just chatted. Cl go ahead and click on her name in the chat and follow her. She does brood war content a lot, and I think she does music and stuff too. So thank you for the host there, Hazel. How was your stream? I hope it was good. I hope you're. I don't know. Were you laddering today, or were you uh, doing some other stuff? <clears throat> but yeah, if you want some more, if you want more brood war uh, channels to follow, there's only a handful. There's like what, maybe like ten channels that are that usually do brood war very often. Um, but uh, Hazley Nut, by the way, one of the I actually don't remember if she was one of the if she was the winner or the runner up of the uh, the SC2GG um, commentator idol, the like the like talent contest that we did for for new commentators back like you know a dozen years ago or whenever that was. So. Anyway, so yeah, we got another blast from the past here. Um, let's see, did I miss any? I don't think I missed any uh, alerts. So thank you very much for the support, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, and now, uh, because you confused by the interface? What interface? Um, in any case, um, speaking of support, I'm going to support you guys as well. We're going to do a giveaway. I didn't mention this in any of my lead up stuff, but uh, we got a surprise giveaway for you guys. I have here, I'm going to be giving away, I'm going to be, uh, let me show you guys what the giveaway is first. Um, I've got, I was, I've been, so I'm actually moving next week. Um, and so I've been cleaning stuff out, going through a lot of old stuff um, in order to kind of condense some of the crap that I've been hauling around and previous moves and what have you. And I found some old StarCraft stuff from years ago and I want to share it with you guys. So I actually have here, this is from BlizzCon from 2009. I've got a noobs figurine, a noobs figurine. And it looks like this. This is what it looks like. So this is a Rainer noobs figurine. Um, from BlizzCon from 2009. This is like one of the like gifts that they gave away at, uh, at BlizzCon. So if you are interested in having me mail you a, a Rainer noobs figurine, let's go ahead and I, let's see, how do I start the giveaway? Here we go. Hopefully that did it. I think there we go. So just, um, yeah, if you want me to sign it, I can sign it if you want. It's now it's in the original pack. You can make a request if it's in the it's in the original packaging, but the packaging is taking some dents and stuff, so it's not like pristine or anything like that. But if you want me to sign the box or the figurine, I could do that if you want to. But um, anyway, so yeah, 
go ahead and exclamation mark ticket and you, everyone can just get one ticket. I think that's, uh, yeah, there's just limited to one ticket. Um, and then uh, once everyone's had a chance, then I will uh, I will draw a winner as a thank you to you guys. So anyways, uh, while we're waiting for people to enter the, the giveaway, I'll go ahead and check with chat for a minute. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, then uh, I'm happy to uh, talk with you guys for a few as well. <clears throat> Rise says, can I enter to give it away to his own channel? Hey, man, if you win, it's up to you what to do with it. <laughs> we can just pass it back and forth. I'll go in your channel, and I'll win the giveaway, and then I'll give it away again, and you can win it back. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Seeing the, uh, the tickets slowing down here. <clears throat> yeah, you can only get one ticket, guys. <laughs> um, all right. We got... See, this is why it's good to, to do giveaways on my channel, because there's so, such good odds. Um, I did a giveaway on my birthday uh, about a month ago, and I had eight things to give away, and there were five people in chat. So <laughs> everyone wants something. All right. Oh, diggity sneaking in, sneaking in his, uh, his admission to this. All right. <clears throat> All right. It looks like the, 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 no one's ticketing anymore. So let's go ahead and do it. I think it'll announce it in chat. So I'm going to close the giveaway and draw a winner. I don't know if it's going to say it in chat. Diggity SC has won, won the noobs, rigged, dude, I just hit the button, Stream Elements announced it, Stream Elements announced it, I didn't, that wasn't me, I just hit the button, so, alright, Diggity has won the noobs, the noobs figuring, Diggity, if you want me to sign it, I'll sign it too, is this, is this see-through, yeah, some of my, the alpha key is showing for that, so, all right, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, I won't have to pay for shipping because I'm going to see Diggity this weekend, I think. So, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, before I move, I'm going to go down and see Diggity, I think. So that'll be fun. Give it to, <laughs> is, is Diggity going to give it away now to someone else? <laughs> All right, don't worry. Hey, you know what? There might be another giveaway later on. We'll see. We'll see if there's another giveaway later on. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I guess I've just telegraphed it. I've, I'm going to do another giveaway later on. So, you know, that's going to happen. But um, <clears throat> I still wanted to maintain a little bit of suspense, right? Brotherhood of the Traveling Marine. Oh, so now Diggity is going to choose another person to win. Is that what's going on? <clears throat> I can sign it and give it to Diggity and he can sign it and give it to someone. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, Diggity, let me know what you decide with your, what you want to do with your winnings um, at some point. All right. Um, let's see. All right. So a um, little bit of a pause here to do that. Bait views by giving away in the giveaway in the beginning and say you are randomly revealing the chat. So you have to stay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really much of a baiter. <clears throat> I don't do the clickbait. Although it's funny because I, I, I noticed on my um, YouTube channel, there's been a couple games that I've done with like superstars, like uh, GSL stars and stuff like that. And I wasn't really trying to do clickbait by making the title like, oh, this is the best GSL winner or something like that. But it was kind of clickbaity anyway. And I got a lot more views on those videos. You know, clickbait works. But then I went in and I looked at the stats and it was like, you know, the average view time was like 45 seconds or something like that because people were going in and being like, this isn't GSL and closing the window. So clickbait doesn't actually work that well after all. And if you're talking about actual sustained views, so <clears throat> let's see. Why are people talking about... Uh, 
Is Klazart writing books? You know, I uh, I haven't talked to Klazart in a long time. I tried to get him on as a guest. And we actually will have a guest appearance on this cast later, by the way. Um, but they're not off work yet, so it'll be after the, the next game. Um, but I've talked to... Uh, I tried to talk to Klazart, and it hasn't really... Uh... Uh-oh. Did my stream just die? What's going on? Uh-oh. Let me reload. Still on? Okay. The preview feed uh, died on my other computer. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, I haven't been able to talk to Klazart. I tried uh, emailing the address I added for him from like 10 years ago. and uh, But he may not be looking at the email address anyway, anymore. So, All right. Anyway, that's enough of a delay. What do you say? Should we uh, get into game number three? I think it's time to do game number three. Um, so let me queue it up here and we will, oops, <clears throat> where is it? There we go. All right. Let's get into game number three, ladies and gentlemen of the ever OSL finals. All right, here we go. Game number three. Again, right now. The score is tied up one apiece between these two players, Boxer and Oov. The Emperor of Terran versus the Cheater Terran. Already an epic series, and it's just possibly getting started. I mean, we could have two more games or we could have three more games, but either way, we're going to have two more games at least uh, since it's tied at 1-1. This is a best of five. One of these players has to get to a final score of three in order to win the series. <clears throat> All right, so we got down here at the bottom right hand corner is going to be the purple Terran is going to be Oov and the orange Terran at the top left hand corner is going to be Boxer. This is the map Mercury. So this is the uh, space map that we talked about before. You can see it right there. Evidence of the space gaps in between <clears throat> in between different bases your main base has a a, a a choke point leading to your natural and that's all kind of one area but then your your main and your natural is kind of like one section of the space station and then uh there is a gap on the side of your main there's a gap on the side of your natural and there's just one ramp leading it's like or a bridge rather a bridge leading out of your natural into the rest of the map so, yeah. Uh, we do have, uh, and I actually already forgot, so I'm going to check again. Yeah, Boxer's the orange. Always got to keep track of the players. Now, again, this is going to be an interesting situation because Boxer, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, both players, rather, uh, could theoretically use air units on this map because of the fact that um, there are so many gaps and so, so many bridges, so many ridges. There's even actually like an, a, a landmass in the middle of the map, which is not accessible by land at all. There's no bases there either. It's just like a tactical spot. So you could, you could put tanks in the middle and it could be able to assault any of the middle, the internal bases. Um, any case, it's just a really weird map. So, um, yeah, we got both players doing pretty normal TVT stuff though. Going straight into the factory units. <clears throat> Looks like we got um, Oof's factory is a little bit farther behind, I think, than Boxer's. Probably won't play too big of an issue. Um, no, actually, they're th about the same place. Never mind. So, yeah, we're going to see a uh, pretty normal early game here. Now, again, once the factories are complete, that's where things might get a little bit loco. Um, you know, for example, that's when we see the divergence into two factories or machine shop first, or we've seen a lot of starports in this series. Actually, a, a lot. With how many? There have been like 10 starports in this series thus far because I think the first game, like Oof had three starports and Boxer had two, and I think the second game it ended up the same way. I think Oof had three starports, but by the mid game of last game. So it's been a lot of airplay in uh this series and there is another starport ladies and gentlemen 
for both players. They're doing it again. This is the Starport series. This is the battle of the air because Boxer is going for two Starports. Oof only getting one Starport. So we might see a similar situation to game number one where we have Wraiths and more Wraiths versus Wraiths and Goliaths. And that might determine, you know, again, it's going to be a tactical game. I think the advantage here goes to Boxer, though. Because if you've got more Wraiths, this is a map where, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to take that back. I, I'm going to say if this, in the in the mid or, mid or late game, it, it'd be more advantageous to have the air army. Because there are so many places that you can go back and forth. But in the, in the early game... I don't know if having more races is going to be a much of an advantage because it is pretty easy to walk your Goliaths back and forth between your main and your natural. And it's actually, even though there's ridges that the race can like, you know, <clears throat> fly around in different spots and approach from different angles, it's actually a, a really wide open area where the Goliaths can roam around in. So it's actually, the wraiths have to fly too far to go to a better, another angle to approach that it's really not going to be super advantageous that they're going to have to go all the way around these big areas and, you know, to get to the natural. And then the Goliaths can just walk over. And so it's actually not that big of a deal. In any case, um, Oof has a Wraith flying across the map. Partially just for scouting, I think. Uh, you know, he wants to get out on the map and... Um, and uh, just kind of see what's going on. Uh, Boxer has a Wraith out, of course, as well. We're seeing the barracks just flying across and being scouting barracks as well. So, actually, I don't think that's a, a dad. That's the SK Telecom coach, I think. I think I said earlier, oh, I think that's Oof's dad because they kind of look similar, but I think that might be the Telecom coach who, of course, uh, you know, <laughs> they uh, <laughs> is the coach for both these players. So, anyway, Boxer is going to take an earlier advantage here, but I, we're going to see, can he actually turn it into a game advantage? And that's what we're going to have to find out. Armory being built in an interesting spot there. The cloak is finished for Boxer. He's coming in here. There's no skin. Wait, there's no skin. I just kind of assumed he was getting skin, but he doesn't have a skin, and he doesn't have cloak for his own wraith either. Oh, no, this is catastrophic for Oov, losing his first two wraiths very quickly to the three cloak rates of boxer and he's actually going to be able to stop the armory from building as well because he can kill any scvs oh no this is just this is terrible for oov you can see some consternation on his face as his scvs are constantly being picked off trying to build this uh, uh, academy he has the armory so he can build goliath now those those rates do have limited energy so they're going to run out of energy for their cloak before too long. It looks like one of them already has. But still, the damage has been done. He's taken out several SCVs. And he's crucially taken out the Wraiths. So now these Wraiths reign supreme in the air. He's up to four Wraiths right now. He's master pairing the one Goliath. Oh, he has to surround that Goliath um, with um, SCVs. And he's able to keep that Goliath alive. But those SCVs are not mining at all. And, um, oh, interesting... Oof actually taking, I think that's Oof taking a, a hidden expansion on the right side of the map. Oh no, and look at this. Oof is, okay, this could be the crucial point in the game though. Oof is counterattacking with his tanks. And Boxer, having focused on race, doesn't actually have a lot to deal with this. Boxer is on one base though. Can he, is he going to get a, a tank out? Does he have a blocked off choke point that he can actually use a tactical advantage there? He's got so many race though. He's going to, he's going to kill off one of the Goliaths. He's going to kill off another Goliath as well. There is a supply depot in the way, blocking um, access. I don't know if the t I don't I think the vultures can get through though, but maybe not the tanks. But here we go. Goliath is out. He's targeting, firing it down. Can he repair fast enough? He looks like he can repair fast enough. He has just enough SCVs, barely enough SCVs to resist the damage coming in. And now Oof coming in with tanks though, invading Boxer's main. And now the SCV has been pulled off to kill the tanks. And the one Wraith popping out kills off the tanks as well. I think Boxer might be able to take a 2-1 lead in this game. Because he has a commanding lead right now. He has a huge tactical advantage. Um, the Goliaths with the mass repair, I don't think it's going to survive for long. Because all he has to do is switch over and kill the SCVs instead of the Goliaths. But here's the thing. Boxer has already killed off 
maybe 10 or 12 of Oof's SCVs. Um, he's prevented Oof from getting a, an expansion, and now he's getting his own, though. This is the crucial thing. So this is really interesting. He's, he's going to actually make his expansion in the middle of the map, in the inner position, uh, instead of the, the natural. So he's going to try... He's, instead of trying to defend the ramp... I'm actually a little bit puzzled by that. I think it would have been a little bit tactically better for Boxer to take his natural, but, you know, Boxer knows better than I do, that's for sure. Even 16 years ago, Boxer was smarter at this game than I am now, uh, 100%. So, uh, this is interesting. He, does he not have a scan? He's got a couple cloak raids just chilling here, picking off SCVs. The Goliaths are sitting there waiting, you know, waiting for their chance to, to dive in and eat. Um, you know, it's like... Uh, it's, <laughs> It's like sea lions at the aquarium waiting for the trainer to start tossing fish at them. And finally, the scan goes off. The, the fish are tossed and they do get to taste some wraith blood. But um, is it going to be enough? Because the Boxer was only risking a couple of his wraith there. He got a few SCV kills in exchange. Um, and it looks like now he's actually looking around the map with these wraiths as well. If he finds that hidden expansion at the right side, he'll be able to kill every SCV... Oh, uh, is he going to see it? Oh, he flies around. Oh, he, oh, no. Boxer shifts away from that base at the last second. Um, well, he wasn't about to find it, but he was very, very nearby it. And he didn't actually see that. And that is actually really, really crucial. Um, yeah, he that, that sneaky base is, is what's keeping Uv alive right now. Because uh, it not only is, you know... It a hidden base that he can mine from, but, you know, he can obviously keep producing SCVs from it as well. But Oof, remember, Oof lost his initial tanks and that counter push as well. Boxer is now pushing across the map to try and push into Oof's area of the map. Uh, he thinks that, he probably thinks that Oof has his natural instead of the hidden base, but Oof does not. And, you know, it's just all up to if he can keep that base hidden or not. Um, that's the crucial thing here. So, this is... Um, this is looking good for Boxer, but Oov can come back if that base stays hidden. If Boxer finds that expansion, um, then, you know, he can take it out really easily, but he needs to actually find it for it to work. So this is uh, this is not looking good at all uh, for Oov if that expansion gets find, found out. <coughs> Excuse me. Boxer now is going to kill off the barracks that was spotting for him. And he actually could theoretically... Take, pick, take shots at the uh, tanks, I think. It looks like maybe he's not quite within range of the uh, the tanks exactly. But um, uh, in any case, yeah. Um, Boxer is in a good spot. He's pushing in. Now he, he kind of knows that Oof doesn't have his natural. So he might start to suspect that there's another base on the map somewhere. He really needs to find that other base. Oh, nice positioning here. Uh, the tank fire being returned back and forth. Now, those tanks are damaged because they did take some tank fire, but Boxer's tanks have been destroyed. Can he dive in and actually finish off those tanks with the race is the thing, right? Like, that's the, uh, that's the thing is, you know, you that's part of the reason why those races are important as well is because in the tank versus tank battle, you know, you, you, you do some over, some overkill on the on the tanks, right? It takes something like, I don't know how many shots it takes for a tank to kill a tank. I think it's three when they're seized or something like that. But the third shot, the last shot, um, does overkill. And so you, you, if you can have something else to do extra damage to finish off those tanks, then your extra tank shots are going to be able to accomplish more. So that's kind of one of the other good reasons for having, um, having that situation. Anyway, he finds it. Oh, he found it. He found it. The race immediately go in to do the damage. Now, this base has been mining for a while, so it might have been at least able to make up enough for what it's been able to, uh, for the cost of itself. But he's still going to lose every wreath now. But Oov takes this advantage, says, well, well you're, if your wraiths are killing off my base, I'm going to go off and kill your third, second base. And uh, it's a shorter distance because Boxer took the middle base. The wraiths came back, though. Is he going to be able to kill it off? It looks like there might be too many Goliaths. Where are Boxer's tanks? Looks like he doesn't have any to speak of right now. Um, and uh, yeah, this is actually looking really bad for Boxer now. The tables have turned. The race have fallen back. And it looks like Oof is going to be able to take out that second base pretty quickly there. Um, yeah, and he's going to have to run away. He's going to have to lift that base. But it looks like he's kind of probably going to be able to kill that as well. Um... 
Interesting. He, I think he built a turret next to that command center. He didn't build it before, but now these wraiths are going to be able to still get in a position where they're outside of range of that turret, and they're still going to be able to be able to do significant damage. Um, so, good situation here for uh, Boxer on that second base. Um, Uv though is going to be able to keep the base though, right? Tanks shelling your base is a lot worse than wraiths shelling your base. Um, Boxer looks like he's going to float that command center over to the left side. He's given up control of that middle there. I'm not sure actually if Uv has decided to maintain that position or if he just says, okay, I've destroyed, I've gotten rid of this base. Now I'm going to move into a better spot instead. Looks like Boxer has some tanks in the middle there. So he's in, you know, not, he's, he's able to kind of maintain a little bit of control of his natural choke at least. And this is, I just want to point out like this is 2004, right? In... <clears throat> 2010 or 2020, you know, I think these players would both be at three or four bases by now. You know, in, in 2004, it was just less... Oh, this is cute. He's brought in the tanks to shell the base, and when the SCVs come off to shell the tanks, he brings in the race. He says, oh, well, you're not near the turret anymore, although the turret has actually been destroyed. But he's going to kill every single SCV. The tanks do get cleaned up, though. The tanks do get cleaned up. Um... And that's crucial that those through losing those three tanks is not good at all. But he kills a lot of SCVs. Boxer now landing at that top left expansion. He's building at his natural, trying to get a third base as well. Um, he's going to have to transfer SCVs over to that left side if it's going to do any good, though. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is the part where I think Boxer, if you count, you know, the total amount of money that they've all got in, that they've both taken in throughout the course of this um then it's uh, I, I think i think it might be advantageous to oof because he had that base on the right side up for so long but again you have to account for what have they lost as well because spent money on units where the units are destroyed you know might as well not be money and that's of course the whole that's the whole game of starcraft uh you know you you build units so that you can kill the opponent's units um and take away the money that they've spent all right, so Boxer is taking control of this left side base. He's got a nice little miniature defense there. He's got a turret, a couple tanks, so he's not too vulnerable. Uh, Uv, by the way, I mean, we saw him earlier with the dropships, but I just want to point out that Uv has decided to go for the dropship play um, and, and, and really focus on that. He's got a few dropships out. He's probably continuing to make them. And so there's, you know, different forms of mobility on a map like this. There's the Wraith's form of mobility of being able to just run an attack or fly an attack, rather. But having the dropships in the air means that you can actually move your better ground units around as if they were air units. And of course, you have to spend a little bit on the dropships, but usually the amount of money spent on the dropships is uh, more than enough to uh, make up for <clears throat> the fact that they can't attack, right? The tactical advantage gained by the dropships is greater than the tactical deficit gained by the tactical deficit of not having more units, right? And, you know, if you think about it, if you have five dropships, you know, that could be four tanks instead. Um, and so it's, you know, it, it, is make, it does make a difference. But if you can use the dropships tactically, they can accomplish more. And so we're seeing that right now. Boxer has invested in a dropship of his own, and he's assaulting that side base of Uv, uh, which now Uv has gotten another base, a third base, and he looks like he's trying to get a fourth on the left side of the map. But in the meantime, Uv has dropped some random Goliaths into Boxer's main, and it looks like there's nothing here. So they're going to be able to get some kills pretty quickly before they die. I mean, they are going to die eventually. Oh, he's dropped tanks as well. Um, it looks like he ferried some units in there. So Boxer is in a little bit of trouble. The race have come back. He's actually going to get the dropship first to make sure no more reinforcement, reinforcements can be ferried in here. He's gonna, then going to go after the Goliaths. He's going to take out the Goliaths pretty quickly. And now once those Goliaths are dead, uh, he can just kill off the tanks at his leisure. or well, maybe not his leisure because they are assaulting his buildings. But actually the Goliaths do a significant amount of damage. He's down to just a few rates, but and he actually lets the That's really interesting. He could have lifted off that that um factory, but he wasn't paying too much attention. Factory goes down to the tank fire before the race can kill off the tanks. Oof now. This is this is beautiful TVT play. Distract him in the main and then go for an attack on one of the side bases. He's actually just marching his army right in the natural. Boxer has nothing here. Boxer's, the, the small amount of army that Boxer has was over on the right side of the map attacking the third base. Um, so Boxer has nothing. He's got nothing here. 
and that command center is just going to get powered down by several tanks by a large army of Oof just marching in there. And Boxer now forced to try to hold his main base and has a, a, a little bit of stuff on the left side of base. Yeah, if, Bo if Oof picks up shop, marches across the map to the left side base, which he has to know is there by now, then he just wins the game because Boxer uh, just cannot cannot live without some form of map control. I think he, he still has a few rates, but he's lost too many of them, I think, to really be effective on the map. Oof has enough Goliaths that one scan will take out any number, all the race that Boxer has in store right now. Oh, Boxer actually is the one that built that bottom left base. So Boxer has a hidden base now, and he's got the, the sort of 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock position base as well. So now the tables have turned again. There's been a lot of, I mean... This, this match is being played around a lazy Susan because the tables have been turning constantly back and forth between these two players in each game. And oh no, Boxer loses. Is he going to lose one dropship? No, he doesn't, but he loses the tank dropping out of it. Uh, he had to drop the tank out as kind of a distraction so he didn't lose the dropship itself. But now he's going to drop in Oov's main, it looks like. Um, let's see. He might actually drop behind the expansion. Oh yes, he's going to drop on the high ground behind the expansion. The map makers did not want there to be a possibility of an expansion that didn't have a disadvantage to drops. And so they put a nice little ridge above here. And this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, actually, that he brought the wraiths along as well. The wraiths killed off the dropships. And that is such a sticky position. I don't think you're going to get those tanks off of there with the wraiths there unless you drop on top of there but he it's gonna be so difficult to drop because of the race there so beautiful move there but again oov just has more stuff if oov can take advantage of the fact that he has more stuff on the map and attack these side bases that boxer has he will win the game and i'm surprised he's not doing that right now um boxer looks like he's trying to position to try and take this middle base um and he's gonna be able to take control of it but oh is he moving in there He's moving, he's going for the kill on the side bases, ladies and gentlemen. He knows they're there, I think. And if Boxer loses those side bases, he's in trouble. Oof is going to lose that bottom right uh, sort of 4 o'clock position base. But he still has the middle base. He still has the top right base. And now Boxer is going to lose this left side base. Um, it's just nothing here. He's going to try and uh, save the SCVs, I guess. Or actually, he's not even running towards the right spot to save the SCVs. He's not running away. He's running towards the bottom left. And that might actually be to buy time. If the tanks have to chase the SCVs bottom left, then they're not attacking top left. So that might be part of his strategy in this situation. Um, and um, <laughs> my computer is frozen once again, by the way. So apologies if uh, something is going on in the chat that I need to know about that I'm not seeing. I have to restart my uh, laptop over here. Um, in any case... Uh, yeah, my laptop just doesn't like this this situation, I guess. This is crazy. Uh, Boxer now dropping on the right side of the map as well to shut down this base. I mean, this is just like... It's like playing whack-a-mole, except both players are the moles and both players are the mallets. You know, both players de desperately trying to knock down each other's bases while establishing their own, and both players trying to use the geography of the map to their advantage to try and do so. Sorry, I had to <clears throat> turn for a second to restart my other computer so I can get the chat back. Get everything back up and running. Um, in any case, now Oov has turned the tables again and has come out with the race. And I apologize if I was distracted by something and I didn't see the uh, starports, but Oov has now taken control of the air. Oov is the one with the air control now, and that is pretty bad for Boxer because that's kind of one of the main advantages that he had was he had enough wraith that he could deal with. He, because he had the wraith advantage, he could do a lot of um, maneuvers that he couldn't before. Boxer has transitioned into dropships, but again, if those wraiths of Oov catch those dropships, they will disintegrate them very quickly. <clears throat> um, Boxer going after this third base again. Now, this is the thing, like, Oov right now, if he loses this base, which it looks like he will, Oov will only have the inside 6 o'clock position base. Oh, but we just saw a scan, ladies and gentlemen. He knows what's there. He's going in for the kill. He's going in with Goliaths and tanks on the ground. There's only two tanks here to defend. Boxer forced to pull his SCVs. Is he running them to safety or is he attacking with them? He's trying to escape with them, and they are getting absolutely slaughtered. 
Just a few SCVs are going to escape. Is a single one going to escape? None of them escape. Everything is killed off. Boxer has killed the right side base. But Oof has killed the left side bases. And now Boxer is just mining with his main base. And actually, he might be out. He might be out right now. And actually, wait, what's going on? Boxer? Wait. Boxer still has those command centers? Oof didn't actually kill the command centers? Okay. Boxer's dropping the main. He's going to kill the armory. He's going to kill the depots. But is it, Actually, no. Never mind. Here come the race. JK, there's too many race. Nothing, he can't just... He cannot deal with that. He's actually even going to target down the tank first. The Goliaths are going to die as well. He's like trying to target down depots, but um, he's going to lose his Goliaths. And we might see GG any moment now, actually, because Boxer now has very little mining. He's, he saved the command centers at the left side bases, but he didn't actually save the the bases themselves so like the mining capabilities he lost all the scvs he doesn't have control enough to hold those bases in order to do that and again boxer coming in to try and kill off this bottom right base which has been re-established but there's just too many cloak wraiths the skin goes off too late the goliath's gonna die the tank's gonna die and oov remains mining at three bases or actually two because his main is probably mined out boxer is mining at zero bases i think right now he's you can see on the minimap barely his distance mining is natural uh right now so this is this is terrible for boxer i think he's going to end up losing this game um pretty soon pretty soon where he's going to lose this game uh, i don't i'm not sure how boxer can you know try and come back and 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 into this map I mean, like, you know, because what can you do? Like, what what's a possible situation, you know, solution that you could do? It would be something like a Wraith switch, a surprise Wraith switch, you know, to counterattack Oov's army. But Oov has, like, 20 Wraiths. It, so there's no way this can happen. Oh, this command center is going to be sad. There's the GG coming from Boxer. Oov takes a 2-1 lead in the series, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. And again, you know what? It's just like absolute craziness. Back and forth. Um, Boxer just couldn't couldn't deal with it. You know, like uh, it, it was I, I don't even know what to say. Like this is just absolute insanity in this this game. The bases, there were one. Let's see. Oove at some point took one, two, three, four, five different bases. And he lost five different bases. We're talking about establishing a base probably 10 different times across those locations, losing six of them at different times. Boxer, you know, taking this, taking his uh, inside natural or the inside like six, uh, 12 o'clock position and losing it, taking the left side bases and losing them, trying to take other bases. Like so much stuff going on around the map. Just absolute insanity. Battles for the air. Battles for the ground. Um, just, just, just bonkers stuff going on all over the place in this game. Um, just, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That was just insanity. Both players just going back and forth. And again, you know, I, I, we're seeing a trend here of this of this uh, matchup where Boxer is going for the clever play. You know, Boxer's going for the clever play, and it accomplishes a lot oftentimes, but it doesn't accomplish enough to shut Oof's macro down. And that is the main thing, is that Oof just has such strong macro that, you know, Boxer's harassment isn't killing him, or he's not able to follow up the harassment with a killing blow. And so Oof just perseveres and survives and keeps building bases and keeps counterattacking and just, I mean, you got to hand it to Oov. Just beautiful counterattacks there. He says, you know what? You're attacking over here on this base. You're attacking over here. You're doing race over here. I'm just going to march six tanks into your natural and kill you, right? Um, and just shut down all of your play. I'm just going to ferry four tanks and four Goliaths into your main and just start shutting down your factories. And so, you know, the... It's like the, the harass... It's like, it's like Boxer is like tickling Oov in his sleep and Oov is like slapping him across the face in reaction right the harassment is a little bit of effective but the counter to the harassment is really you know what's doing the damage so anyway 
like I said, uh, up two to one, two to one right now. So, um, let's see. Now I'm going to go ahead and check my messages. Let's see if we have our first, our, our guest here. We might be able to have our, our guest appearance right now if they are around. <clears throat> And not sure if they are. Why don't we do this? Um, we got all, we got at least one more game left, ladies and gentlemen. We got at least a, a fourth game coming up. And if Boxer can win game four, we have a fifth game coming up. Um, I like I said, I have another uh, thing to give away, and I am going to. I've left it in the other room. Okay, Diggity is telling me to run the raffle again. You. <laughs> So you just decided you didn't want the, the noobs? You want to give it to someone else? I actually think I can just run... I can draw another winner. So is that what you're saying, Diggy? You want me just to draw another winner? You can sign in as well. All right, cool. Um, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll draw another winner for the noobs. Right? The, the noobs figuring. And then we'll do a break. I want to take a quick break um, to grab the other thing and just get like a, a granola bar really quick. And then uh, we'll come back from break with a, a special guest to chat with for a minute. And then uh, I think we'll we'll do the other giveaway. We'll do the, we'll do the bait like was suggested. If you stick around, we might do another giveaway after the next game. Right, so we'll do the other giveaway after the next game, and it's gonna be another cool giveaway. So, all right, um, let's see here. Can I reopen this? Okay, let's. Look, okay, I think I'm just gonna draw another winner. All right, who's gonna be the winner of this one? Again, I'm just clicking the button. All right, Opabina Regalis, are you still in the chat? Are you still around? Opabina Regalis. It's a cool name. I wish I knew what anyone's name was. He might not even be here. Hey, there he is, Opabina Regalis. Sick. All right, excellent. So, um, Opa, Opabinia Regalis. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. It's, I always try and, I would like trying to figure out people's Twitch usernames because they're all kind of weird. Um, Is it Latin? It's interesting. All right, so Opabina, I'm gonna go and, so you have your choice. You can tell me if you want me to sign it or if you just want the figurine itself. Let me pull it back up here. If you just want the figurine just by itself, um, just to have, up to you. If you want me to sign it, I'll sign it. If you want Diggity to sign it, Diggity can sign it too. If you want both of us to sign it, we can both sign it and then I'll be sending it to you. So I'll go ahead and um, whisper me on Twitch uh, with your email address and then I'll email you and, uh, I'll get your address uh, if you're comfortable giving it to me and, um, and then we'll get it to you after we get it signed. So yeah, so just whisper, whisper me on Twitch and, uh, and we'll get that to you. Double sign, put some nasty Marine slogans on the armor. What? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> you mean like the Marine sound effects or something like that? Um, anyway, so yeah, we'll get that to you at some point. All right. So I'm going to put on, uh, some filler for a, for a couple minutes so I can get a granola bar. Cause I'm like starving. Cause I actually haven't eaten. Cause I woke up and immediately started getting stuff together. Cause I didn't have time to, uh, to finish all the graphics yesterday. All right. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to put on, uh, filler for a second. And we'll come back and we'll have our special guest and then we'll do game number four and then we'll do a giveaway and then we'll do a game five if that exists. So let me go ahead and switch over to this. Here we go. Okay. And um, I don't know if I'm even on right now. Yes, I am. Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead and give you guys something to watch for a couple minutes. Good old kitten playlist. I'll be back in a few.
Hey, how's it going? Psionic Reaver here, tuning in for another exciting game of StarCraft. Boxer versus I Love UUV. Game three. Hey, how's it going, Mole Trap? Saying my audio is working, but now you guys, this is Satin Agree no. hijacking the mole trap sound waves to no. bring you this message. My stream Moles deserve better. My stream. Um, how's it going, Sonic? How are you doing? I'm doing excellent, thank you, sir. <laughs> what you been up to, man? It's been. Uh, I mean, I've seen you in the last ten years, but have you? When was the last time you uh, you casted anything? Oh my gosh, the last time I casted something. <laughs> And probably not since 2012 or 2013. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't casted well, anything. That's not true. If you're talking StarCraft, it's been about that long. But yeah. I was really into Deserts of Karak, uh, Homeworld Deserts of Karak, and I, oh, I yeah, uh, yeah. was part of that competitive scene for a little while and uh, uh, did a bunch of developer games community members and i did very well in the tournament scene um in the first year of deserts of karak uh but then you know family and life and all that. you know i can't it's hard to stay competitive when you're 36 these days you know it's <laughs> now i just take a take a back seat to it and just have fun but i did host um back in 2017 when starcraft remastered first came out i hosted the I did a revival of Yankee League. I don't know if any. Oh, know. okay. Back in 2008, uh, Zaris Duran Parsi used to run mm. the uh, American team leagues, basically, and it was a chance for like Americans to like showcase their talent. And Diggity and I and a couple other people. I think you did a couple uh, Yankee leagues as well. I think Noah or Mole Trap, excuse me. Uh, Sorry, right. in 2017. And to, well, in 2017, I did the Pan American Team League, but it's it was a revival of the Yankee League. Oh, the Yankee League. I might have done a couple Yankee Leagues, but I didn't do very many of them. Diggy is the one that did the bulk of those, if I remember correctly, with you, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And so I, I kind of revived that. I dedicated it to Zaris. I don't know if he ever heard it through the grapevine, but I did a <laughs> Pan American Team League in 2017 uh, because there were, like, no american team leagues in 2017 so for like the reboot of starcraft remastered i hosted this big tournament chipped in some cash uh some other people chipped in some cash we had a, a good fun time like nowadays there's a lots of team leagues and things going on so yeah yeah um but that's that's kind of what i did for a little while now i just kind of i got three kids i got a five-month-old newborn and i you know i work in a warehouse I manage congratulations a warehouse construction i work for oh thank you that must be really easy, right? Have a newborn, it's just like don't have to do anything ever, right? It's, get up plenty of sleep, imagine. Well, you know, actually, he's a really good baby. Like, oh, he, okay. At after like five weeks, he sleeps through the night, no problems. I mean, he'll get <clears throat> a little hungry sometimes, and then either my fiance or or I will get up and we'll take care of him and. Uh, my other two kids uh, are great. They're super helpful. They they help hold them, feed them, burp them, play with them, and so it's just been, it's just I can't complain. You know, life is good for for the Reaver and his scarabs and his mothership. <laughs> That's fantastic, man. Any any of your kids are gonna be a uh, StarCraft Four Bonjois? Well, you know, my two oldest are actually half south korean so oh, there's a chance okay that it could happen um Luca, <laughs> my my son he's turning six in a couple days and he watches me play starcraft and he's like dad like you get so intense you get scary when you play <laughs> and look, playing protoss versus zerg I, it's still a frustrating matchup um and also protoss versus Aaron because you know there's these 75 mineral units that can fly across the map, drop nuclear bombs in the ground that can come up at any moment and blow up your whole army um, out of nowhere. So, um, but no, I don't, I don't really get mad, but I, you know, it's hard not to be competitive in StarCraft, um, even at this point in my life. Um, but he really seems to enjoy it. Maybe, who knows? He, he could take after the steps of, I of wonder, I wonder if there could be a, a, 
a custom map or a custom mode of StarCraft that's just like like Star Minecraft, like just a co-op mode where you're just like creating a nice base that looks cool and there's no actual enemies and like <laughs> think of that. We could do the StarCraft 2 co-op mode with my boy. That be that would be fun. Now that StarCraft 2 is free to play. Yeah. Just just piano, pull up a 512 by 512 oh. map and like empty map and just build on it and make cool designs with your supply depots and crap or whatever. I don't know. should get in another 10 years all the caster kids <clears throat> together. <laughs> and have them play like and have them play games. Dude, there's a lot of caster like, kids around. It's like my whole life has been leading up to this moment, son. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> all right. Well, um I think we're going to get back into uh the next game here in a minute. Um but any, any other shout outs you want to do or anything else you got going on you want to talk about before we we go uh, and of course you, you and I could we'll chat other times but the people demand their starcraft action absolutely <clears throat> well uh, I know I'm putting out a general call out Greth if anyone knows Greth or, or remembers Greth um, he uh, he did a lot of like FFA um casting and still does do a lot of ffa casting if you go on youtube and search for Greth, um he and i like kind of spearheaded ffa casting back with the sc2gg um casters we used to get together and play these big ffa battles and so he wants to know is there any old school sc2gg casters that want to get back together and have one big ffa on no hunters like we used to do back in the day um, as we all know, I am the reigning champ. I'm two and zero oh, uh, <laughs> with the with, uh, with the, all the casters playing together. Um, notably, I pro brushed. Um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I pro brushed someone, killed them, and then still went back to my base and came back from being behind to win the game, which was, was like my that's like my my proudest. That's pretty insane. That's that's uh, any, that says that either you're a super, that says that either you're a super gosu or the rest of the casters are super noobs. Uh, that's probably a little bit of both. But <laughs> let's uh, if, there, if there's any SC two GG casters still kicking around, find me on Discord. I'm uh, I'm I'm not hard to find. Or on Team Liquid, I still post there. But let's see if we can get something together again, and that'd be that'd be really fun. I think to get us all back together to do that. I don't know, man. I, I don't know about any SC two GG casters around here. I haven't seen any lately. Definitely not. No. Definitely not one myself, and there's definitely not like two or three in chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, but that's uh, but yeah, that's it. So, but there's still lots of tournaments for all you guys out there. If you're new, there's a ton um, of reward stuff. Someone's mentioning this in chat. There's the Coach Pupil League for new people that want to get into StarCraft. That's a great place to start. But otherwise, <clears> let's get back to to finishing these OSL finals. Uh, game three of Boxer versus I Love UUV. Um, just the pinnacle of of StarCraft in that era. Just you can't get better. There's no better players from that era that you could get together and just sit down and just and just be amazed. So good luck. For sure. Good initiative from Old Trap. I love it. <clears throat> yeah, man. Thanks for that transition. All right. We'll talk again soon. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and get back in it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back. Thank you very much. And one. we'll go back into our normal screen and... I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm going to hang up on you, Psionic, but I'll talk to you again later. And, uh, yeah, so I, I have to agree with you, though. This is um, definitely the pinnacle of 2004 StarCraft. You know, we've talked about it before a little bit, but I'm going to mention it one more time. Just that, like, not only is this, like, the pupil versus the... Uh, um, the student... The pupil versus the student... The student versus the teacher, right? But it's also this matchup of the old versus the new, right? Oov represents, in 2004, the new school, the new wave of players. You know, you've got your Oov and your July Zerg are like these new up-and-coming players that are taking over. And then you've got your your Boxer and your Reach and, uh, you know, players like that that are like still the kind of old school hanging on to things. And it's kind of interesting to think about that. That's from 2004. That's 16 years ago. Now, Oov is like one of the oldest old school players. Right? He's become a coach over the years. 
Uh, I think the the shot of him in the suit earlier that I showed was from when he became the SKT one coach years years after this series, right? Um, <clears throat> so they're all super old school now. But at the time, you know, if you'd only been playing competitively for two years, you were a newbie uh, compared to the five year old players, you know. So um, it's kind of interesting to, to think of it that way. So anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start thinking about game number four. And again, I did. I did actually during that break. I got, I got something. I'm gonna tease it a little bit. Show the show the edge of it. Oh, what is this? What is that? Oh, I don't know. Might have something else to give away in a bit. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. Oh, and actually, speaking of which, uh, Diggity, if you're still in chat, you want to put that link for the thing that you want me to talk about, since Sionic was talking about. How there's a lot of other stuff going on in Brood War. If you don't know, uh, Diggity has... Uh, his <laughs> can't convince him to come back to casting. He's too busy. He has kids also. But um, <clears throat> he has been working in, in the background on organizing some projects to kind of make Brood War better. So if you're interested in helping out with some of those technical projects, uh, he's going to post a GitHub link. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a Discord invite. I'm not sure what Discord that is, actually. Is that the, okay, yeah, Engineering Bay Discord link uh, that Rain Man put in there. And Engineering Bay link is uh, for the projects themselves. Engineering Bay is the Discord where they discuss and collaborate on those projects. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, I'll put uh, links to those in the video description if you want to join up as well, if you want to help out with uh, the Brood War scene, or if you just want to go on there and, you know, see what people are talking about. So... All right, um, I think we're going to get into it. Again, apologies for the audio issues. I've been having to switch microphones and stuff and catch up with everything. So, But um, at least we haven't had any issues with the games themselves, and that's the important part, right? So let's go ahead and uh, get started, and we're going to queue up game number four, ladies and gentlemen. And we got a 2-1 lead for Oof right now, so he could take it home right now. All right. Let's go ahead and get into game number four. <clears throat> All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth game between Boxer and Oof. We're going to have Oof. As the red Terran and the left side of the map, we're gonna boxer as the white Terran. It looks like on the top of the map, and this is actually this is interesting. We've had, we've had. Um, oh, clarifying that what I was just talking about with the uh, the games or the the links, the GitHub that Diggity uh, linked is a for different places in Brood War to help out. So there you go. Um, in any case, this is on Requiem. This is on Requiem. And this is the first time that we haven't had cross positions, I think. Uh, all three of the maps, even though the last two maps were four spawn maps, uh, this map has four positions. They've still been in cross positions. So this has possibly even the most potential for shenanigans. Maybe Pelinor has the most potential for shenanigans. But here we have... Um, these two players in re really close air positions. Are we going to see Boxer go for Wraiths again? Are we going to see Wraith Oof go for even more Wraiths again? Are we going to see something cheesy? We've seen long macro games thus far to get to this point. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it all could come down to this match. Oof is up 2-1 to one right now. If he wins this game... He is the champion, and he will have proven himself. And okay, we got two barracks going down for Boxer, ladies and gentlemen. Two barracks leading for bo two barracks for Boxer, two Boxers for barracks. Sorry. <laughs> um, and Uv is going for gas, so he might not be prepared for this. No, which oh, is Uv going to scout? Uv needs to scout this. If he goes for a normal factory build, and he doesn't get some defenses, he could be in trouble. Where is he going to scout? Where is he going to scout? His SCV is going towards the north. Now, can Boxer block this scout, though? Can he get <coughs> Marines on the ramp in time to block this scout? Um, 
What? Okay. And like, oh, an academy as well? Boxer is getting an academy and gas, and he is going to block the ramp. This is going to be a secret strategy for Boxer. Oov will not be able to scout this at all. Um, he's going to be going into factory tech, and once he gets a Vulture out, he'll be able to break that ramp. But Vulture will not be out for a while, and so he is not going to see this coming. Boxer is getting an academy, and he's getting gas, which means he's going to be upgrading probably Stim. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> he's definitely not going to upgrade Solar Flare. Um, very, very unlikely he's going to upgrade the U-51, 251 shells or whatever, the, the Marine range. And this is really clever. Look at this. He's put two Marines on the ramp, and then he's hiding the rest of his Marines behind, keeping them out of vision as he's making lots and lots of Marines. Because normally, you make one or two Marines out of your barracks, and then you float the barracks to scout with. And is that what, is that what Oov is doing? Oov is building Marines. Is he going to be able to hold this off? By building Marines, he's actually going to get a factory up as well. Looks like Boxer is moving out on the map to just try and see if he can pick off some SCVs or something like that. He wants to make. He's actually getting medics as well, so that might he might even not even get stim. He might just be getting medics with the academy and the gas. A medic Marine combo is going to be pretty strong here. The Vulture counterattack though is going to be potentially deadly. He is getting stim upgrade, and here we go. Boxer moving out on the map. He's got a handful of Marines. He's got two medics as well. If stim finishes with the Marines as well, and okay, here comes. He's trying to save this for the last possible moment. He's going to get a couple more Marines out, and he's probably going to attack with those Marines. Oov is going for a starport, though. If he gets out a Wraith, and he gets perhaps Cloak, then he could hold this off, and here he sees it now. Stim is probably three quarters complete right now. It's almost done. And they're moving across the map. Medic Marines pushing across the map right now. Oov has spotted it, though. Can he respond in time? He's falling back. He has a lot of vultures, actually. Can he defend with just these vultures? The bunker is trying to go up. He stims in, though. He does have stim. Can he accomplish enough? The boxer needs to win with this rush right now, or he's going to be eliminated from the finals. Oof needs to hold this off if he's going to continue in this game. If he doesn't win right now, it's going to be so hard for Boxer to come back. But he has killed all the SCVs. He's killed off one of the Vultures as well. He's stimming in. He's going to go after the Marines. He's going to fall back. The, the two Medics are keeping so much of his units alive. Oov needs to kill off those Medics. He needs to kill off the Medic. He almost gets one as it was separated from the other. But doesn't quite get it off. He doesn't quite get the kill off. Uh, Wraith is out now. And the Wraith is traveling across the map. This is such close positions that that Wraith will be able to get right into Boxer's base very quickly. Boxer needs to end it now. He needs to end it quickly. There is no way that he's going to be able to survive if he doesn't end it quickly with those Wraiths killing off his... And here he goes in. This is the last attack. He stims in. He kills off the SV. He kills off the Marines. Can he stop the bunker from going up? It looks like the bunker does go up, but there's nothing going in it. He kills off the Vulture as well. Boxer is killing so many SCVs, and the medics are keeping the Marines alive. And he's now on top of the barracks as well. It looks like this is going to work for Boxer. And he's gonna, it's just got one Vulture left. He's microing it like crazy. He's got one Marine inside the bunker, though. He's targeting down the bunker. He's killing so many SCVs, though. Where is the Wraith? The Wraith is probably finishing off Boxer's SCV line right now. And he does... Oh, my God. Is Oov gonna bring it back? He's killed off almost all of Boxer's SCVs. He's down to four SCVs mining. Boxer has two Marines on the ramp with those two medics left. Right now, five, six SCVs mining for Oov. Boxer has um, just a couple Marines left. Okay, this is it. This is the last ditch. He has a, such a deficit of Marines. If he doesn't kill Oov with this, I know I've said this twice before, but but the Wraith counterattack has brought Oov back into this game. And Oov has run his SCVs and has lifted his command center. He's lifted his command center. He's... He's given up on mining right now because he knows those Marines would kill everything. And the Marines have come back. He's got two medics, two Marines and a medic back in the main. The Wraith has been driven off. But Boxer has lost every, every SCV as well. Neither player is mining. Both players have lost every single SCV. Well, not lost all the SCVs, but both players are not mining right now. And this is insanity. This is insanity. Could we even see a draw right here? The Wraith is killing off any attempts for Boxer to mine. He needs to get Marines back there. Does he have any Marines back in his main? I th we saw one or two earlier. But the, the, 
And he's going in, he's going after the bunker. Looks like he's killed off some SCVs as well. He's targeting the bunker down. The bunker fails. There's no more SCVs left to repair it. The bunker fails. Oof, GG's. Oof, GG's. And Boxer has done it. He's done it. The Medic Marine Rush, Stim Rush in Terran versus Terran. Would he have done that? And he, he even, I think he did that before he even knew they were close positions. That might have failed if they were in cross positions again, but they were in close positions on this map. And Boxer executes the rush perfectly. Oh my god, this is absolutely insane. Look at the look on Oof face. He almost cannot believe that worked. Um, he is devastated. He was within inches of winning the final. And now we have a tied up match, ladies and gentlemen. It is two for Oov versus two for Boxer. And, um, wow. This is absolute insanity, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't even know what to say. That was crazy. That was just, that was insane. Um, like, <laughs> did, you, did you see that? That was nuts. Um, and that was so, so close, too. Like, that was so close. Like, at first, it looked like Boxer had a major advantage. That Wraith, though... And imagine if that Wraith had instead been a second factory with, with you know, extra vultures coming out or something that, like that. Um, there's so many ways that could have gone wrong for Boxer, but he managed to pull it off. And then it almost went wrong anyway. The Wraith just traveled across, and Boxer... The guts in that guy... Boxer says, you know what, I'm going to uh, skip the, I I'm not going to try and defend. Instead of keeping his Marines back in his main, his reinforcements, to kill off that Wraith, he rallied them forward and kept rallying them forward constantly. He didn't give a crap. He kept rallying Marines forward, only onward, only attack, only face for the entire game until he had lost every single SCV he was not mining, had zero SCVs to speak of, and still kept attacking, and somehow had gotten enough stuff that he was able to move in for the kill, kill off that bunker, kill off the last of UV units, and then just had, just had too many Marines. It was insane. Absolutely insane. Um, yeah, only Boxer could do that, right? <laughs> only Boxer... People are saying that in the chat if you're watching this uh, later on in YouTube. Only Boxer could pull off an m and rush versus Terran. We're going to a game five, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to a game five, an epic finale to this best of five. Um, wow. I I don't know what to say about that. That was uh, absolutely crazy. Um, so, I mean, we could go to game five, I guess. I guess let's get straight into it. Um... <laughs> this is going to go down to the, the last game. And again, you know, just, um, I've talked about this over and over again, but, uh, there's so much meaning to this, you know, I want to, I want you guys to think about this last game. We've talked about the meaning for Starcraft and the old versus new and have you, but there's so much meaning in this for both these players, right? This is boxer. His, his, his chance, the first chance he's had to win a Star League in a couple years, right? And there's talk, you know, when I was preparing for this, uh, this OSL, and especially for this finals, I was going back and looking at some of the threads, um, like TL and stuff like that. People, what, what were people saying at the time, right, about the group selection stage and about stuff like that? And, you know, everyone basically thought this was Oov's championship. And, um, kind of no one really said it that i saw but there was tones of like is boxer washed up you know this was what was going on in the thought process like is box boxer being swept aside by the the winds of change is boxer you know being left in the the background because we saw all those accomplishments when we were talking about the stats at the beginning of this series right boxer having just a bajillion first, seconds, and third places in all these different StarCraft leagues and tournaments and championships and 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 show matches and all this crazy stuff. And Boxer is just possibly the most accomplished StarCraft player ever, even to this day. Because even players, you know, like Flash and Jadong, 
there just haven't been as many star leagues and they haven't been able to quite as win as many. I, I could be wrong about that. But like, you know, if you go to the career achievements uh, of boxer, it's like three pages long or something like that on team liquid. Um, so, but most of those are in the first three years of Starcraft, you know, 90, uh, 2000, 2001, well not, maybe not 99, but 2000, 2001, 2002 boxer was unbeatable and then he was beatable. So this is his chance, you know, think of it in his heart, like what he's, what's going through his mind and his heart right now. Like this is his chance to be a champion again after so long without being a champion and he has to defeat his student to do it. But I think, you know, boxer, you know, in his games against yellow, people criticize him a little bit for going for this cheesy strategy. And he said, you know what? I don't play for the fans necessarily. I play to win. And he played strategies that won against Yellow in the semifinals. And so he wants to win. You know that he wants to win. It's what's in his heart is that he really wants to win these games and he wants to be a champion again. At the same time, you know, Uv had a year where he seemed dominant, where he seemed unstoppable. He couldn't quite pull off the OSL. The OSL is still the thing that he has not accomplished yet. And so for him, again, this is his chance to prove himself that he's not just a three-hit wonder with the three MSLs that he wants, that he can he can be consistent and he can win the OSL and the MSL back-to-back. -back. So there's so much on the line for the reputations, for the pride, for the ego, for the hearts of both of these players. So let's go ahead and get into game number five and let's find out which of these players is going to go home with that championship and achieving the dreams that they have. Let's get into game number five. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a drink of water here for a second. <laughs> you can see, hear the Korean commentators don't even know what to say either. <laughs> the Korean caster was just like, yes, ever Star League. And there's just this quick pausing, like, he just didn't know what to say, because there's, like, such an epic situation for us to be in. Right? It's a tie ball game. It's a tie matchup between these two players. And we're back on by Frost, ladies and gentlemen. Back on Bifrost, which was a really crazy game. But, you know, remember what happened on the first game? Uh, Boxer was very creative and he was strategically superior. He took the high grounds and assaulted Uv's bases. You know, he was able to make the better tactical decisions. He was able to accomplish a lot with the Wraiths. Um, and get an air advantage for a short time. Eventually, Uv got the air advantage. But, um, you know, Boxer played a little bit smarter, I think. But Uv just played a little bit better in the first game on this map. And so are we going to see a similar situation? You know, Boxer's strength is his intelligence and his creativity, uh, as we saw in the last game. And <clears throat> can he actually make it work? Can he actually make it work here on game five? What he didn't succeed at in game one. Can he take home the championship with his intelligence and his creativity and the strength of his will and his experience, his experience of playing um, so many games. And this is interesting. We got a little scout going in here. It's hard to tell the difference between these SCVs a little bit sometimes, but uh, Boxer is, so I didn't cover it yet. So let me make sure that we are, are clear on this in case you missed it boxer is the purple terran so boxer is the purple terran at the bottom left hand corner of the map they've switched positions from this map on game one of this series and uv is going to be the yellow terran in the top right hand corner of the map <clears throat> and boxer i was going to say this is interesting he's kind of made a, his wall kind of behind his base in a weird spot where it's like kind of hidden it doesn't block his choke but it also doesn't block any sort of backdoor attack from the behind base so it's kind of an interesting spot the only thing i can think of is that maybe um maybe it's there because he wants to have his barracks in a better spot to float to 
Oof's to somewhere on Oof's side of the map is a little bit quicker or something like that. That's all I can think of. Um, both players putting uh, it looks like depots in their choke point, and again, you know, they're gonna put it in a spot where um, <clears throat> they're gonna put it in a spot where they can have a choke and they can block it a little bit, but they're also putting a building in the way so that their opponent cannot land a barracks in that spot to block their reinforcements, which we've seen in this series before. And those guys are super excited to be on camera. Um, look at the crowd. Absolutely amazing epic crowd here this evening. Or that evening, I guess, in 2004. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we got the start ports again. This is, there's not been a single game without a start port in this series. And oh, Oof is going to try and scout. Is he going to scout it? We can't see his vision. I'm sure that was out of his vision, though. Boxer would be smart enough to put those in a spot where the inevitable SCV scout um, around the side of the map would not see it. And there you see Boxer going for the same SCV scout, trying to get in the back there. Um, so, absolute craziness. I just remembered that I forgot, because game four was so insane and short, I forgot to do the giveaway, by the way. So, if you're in the Twitch chat, I will do the giveaway after this game. So, uh, but remind me if I forget. And, oh! Did the SCV see it? I don't think it did. I don't think he saw it. And he doesn't know. He doesn't know about these two starports. I don't think he saw that either side. I don't think he saw it on the left or the right. So, uh, but now he sees it. Okay, so now the barracks sees it. So never mind. The epic uh, denial of information has finally been thwarted. And he's able to float that barracks in there. Um... So, Uv now knows this is happening. Now, here's the thing. Uv has actually gone for uh, a very quick uh, vulture attack here. And Boxer is actually putting an engineering bay in the choke point to stop those vultures from running in. He actually has a two vultures of his own. But this is going to get a little bit tight. This is going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze uh, in terms of uh, Boxer being able to defend this. Um, he will be able to get wraiths out. And wraiths can do pretty well against vultures. They kill them slowly but efficiently. 100% efficiently, I guess, since the vultures cannot attack them. <clears throat> and he's getting cloak as well. So, um, yeah. Things looking okay for Boxer. Um, he's going to be able to hold things off here. Now, he has a wraith. He's going over and attacking the barracks. Um, but look at the amount of vultures that are out there. So, he's killing off this depot, which he might even be able to repair it. Yeah, so that's not, he's not going to be able to get in. So, Interestingly, we have um, both players kind of investing in um, investing in stuff that has been thwarted pretty easily, I guess. Right. So the vultures um, not able to accomplish much. The wraiths, though, he's not really accomplishing much with the wraiths either, and they got scouted in time such that now. Uh, Uv has an engineering bay and he has turrets all around his base. And Uv is doing the same thing again. Wow. He is actually doing the same thing again where he's countering the wraiths with more wraiths. And just saying, okay, well, you know what? If you can get wraiths, I'm going to try and get more of them. At a certain point, you're going to stop building wraiths to build tanks. And then I'm going to out-wraith you, um, I guess. And it might just be a, a factor of this map. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> Boomercaster losing his voice now. Um, it might be a factor of the fact that this map is so good for, for air units that he just knows that he needs to to interact with the air arms race at some point. The here Boxer is finally uh, finished using those races to just kind of defend, and he's actually going in for an attack, but it's a little bit late. Uv already has um, stuff everywhere. He cloaks. I'm not sure why he cloaked there. He's wasting his cloak energy right now. There was nothing there to actually attack him. Maybe he was worried about cloaked wraiths for from Uv since he saw those starports. Not sure. Um, in any case, though, Boxer does have the air advantage, which means he has, for the moment, map control. And that is crucial. Um, that means Boxer can expand. It means he can theoretically move around the map and try and uh, block uh, Uv's expansions. But he also has critically scouted the fact that Uv is trying to go after him in the air. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's hard to say who's in a good spot here. Now, Boxer has gotten a dropship as well. Now, this is a really cool situation where Boxer, he can use the wraiths 
to protect what's in the dropship, right? Um, if, you know, normally if you go in for a drop and you drop a couple tanks somewhere, if your opponent has wraiths, they'll kill off the tanks pretty easily. But if you have more wraiths, you can protect your drops. So that might be what I think we're going to see here is either a tank drop or it could be vulture drop as well. Now, we're actually curious. Okay, his wraiths are following the, the dropship instead of leading it. Um, they are going to meet up though and go to the same spot. So it looks like, uh, and again, remember this, this map has high grounds aplenty. There are high grounds everywhere you can utilize to attack different places. What is he going to actually do up at there? Um, what is he dropping there? Oh, vultures running by. Do not see it. <clears throat> and there's Uv's wraiths as well. Oh, Uv's wraiths are just going to fall back. So Uv now has three starports. I didn't even know you could make three starport wraiths off of one gas. Um... So that's kind of crazy. And Uv, I mean, he's probably he's going to try and outdo Boxer, basically. You know, if you're behind by four wraiths, and that's about how many wraiths he was behind. I think Boxer had about four wraiths when, when Uv started producing his wraiths. You know, it's it's four production cycles of three versus two when you can catch up. Plus the fact that Boxer might not be producing off of both starports. Now, Bo does Boxer know how many wraiths there are? He might, I mean, he has to suspect it since he did scout the two starports. But um, we'll have to see if he actually is able to utilize it. And actually, Vulture's getting here. This is actually could be catastrophic for Boxer. He could lose a lot of SCVs. His armory is not done yet. His wraiths are there to counterattack. But look at the SCV actual slaughter going on. So many SCVs killed and only three Vultures lost. Boxer has transferred a lot of his SCVs over to this other base in the back natural. So he's going to be able to keep mining uh, minerals. In order, and he's going to be able to keep producing SCVs as well. He's got two two command centers, so he can keep producing. Hold that thought. We might have a Wraith battle going on here. Uv decides to turn tail and run. Boxer gets some free kills. Oh, no. He's commsats a little bit late, so Uv gets a few free shots. Now they're both commsatted. They're both cloaked. It's a Wraith on Wraith battle. Who's going to target fire better? And it looks like Boxer has won the Wraith battle. He even scans to pick off that last Wraith, and Boxer has taken a significant advantage in this game. He now leads the Wraith count, despite the fact that Uv has been continuing to produce race out of three starports instead of two. But Uv now going in for another attack with these vultures. Only a single wraith here to actually combat that. It looks like he's going to take it out pretty quickly though. But uh, Boxer is going to lose a couple more SCVs. And interestingly, we don't see him actually producing SCVs at that command center. And that we've been looking at the command center for a little while now. I mean, that's, you know, it might be just part of 2004 that people didn't know how to macro. Even Boxer didn't know how to macro that well. Um, and, but, you know, ideally he would want to be producing lots of SCVs out of both of the expansions. Look at the amount of SCVs that are in supply line of, of Uv right there. He's oversaturated in preparation for getting a third base. Boxer though was just good saturation at his second base and minimal saturation, not full saturation at his first base. So, you know, even though Boxer did take a little bit of an advantage there, I feel like Uv again, you know, this has been the story of this entire series that Uv, he, he, he loses some of the tactical positioning, uh, but he just is so much more powerful of a macro player that it doesn't actually matter. Um, Boxer's still not producing SCVs at his main base. I think that's a mistake a little bit, but again, it might just be the fact that... Well, it might be 2004 and a lack of macro ability, but it also might be the fact that he doesn't think he can afford it because he thinks he needs to be com continuing to com to produce units. And he says, okay, I've got enough, I've got enough stuff Okay, now he's producing. So it might have been a cut where he was cutting SCVs in order to get a certain amount of units out in order to defend. Oh no! The engineering bay lands a little bit too late. Actually, it was a pretty good timing because he does actually get um, two... He only gets two vultures through and he's going to be able to kill those vultures which is actually... It worked out perfectly for him that those two, S two got through. It looked like it was going to be three. Ended up only being two. But the engineering bay landed just a little bit too late to completely block that. Now, how is Boxer going to get another base, though, is the thing. Um, these vultures out on the map are being a little bit um, annoying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it's kind of weird how they both kind of have different kinds of map control. Uh, he's lifted up. So that's interesting. He's lifted up that engineering bay so that his units can get out. And so that must have been what happened is he, he's, he had his engineering bay lifted. And then when he saw Uv going in for the vultures, he landed it as a preventative measure. But... Um, that could have been really bad. That he actually got the landings started, 
if one of those vultures had gotten in the way before the landing started, then he would have said landing sequence interrupted and he wouldn't have been able to land it at all. In any case, here is the junior, junior, I sorry, tried to say genius. Gen I tried to say genius and boxer at the same time. I said junior. Um, the genius of boxer going in here with an attack on the high ground. Oof has taken the expansion on the low ground. And uh, so he's able to accomplish uh, a high ground attack here. Oof at the same time going in at killing off more SCVs. He's been consistent about killing off those SCVs. Boxer now has a third base on the map. So Boxer is actually kind of keeping up in macro for the moment. But Oof... Oh, actually, Oof doesn't even have his natural. So they're both at two bases right now. I think Oof is trying to get a third base in the middle inside position. Um, but Boxer's killing off now SCVs at the at that third base. Or the I guess what you call the natural, the outside natural maybe. It's hard to decide what to refer to these. And oh, here come the race though. He's going to pick off the tanks first and then fall back. Instead of trying to kill off the um, turrets and then kill off the Goliath and then kill off the Wraiths, the tank, the one tank is the main threat. So he's just going to go for that. Very smart move. Um, Boxer has fallen behind in the race this time, though. Um, it, you know, he, he won that Wraith battle earlier, but it, it looks like after he won that Wraith battle, he completely stopped making Wraiths. So, um, Oov continued to make Wraiths. He didn't give up after losing that air battle. He continued producing Wraiths and... Um, has now kind of caught up in the Wraith battle. Now, here's the interesting thing. We're seeing a control tower on Boxer's second um, second starport. Now, this could be for dropship production. Are we going to see more Valkyries? He knows now that Oov has a ton of Wraiths. Are we going to see a few more Valkyries made to combat them and counteract them? It's a very smart move. Honestly, there's no reason not to. Oov has invested so much money in those Wraiths that it would be very, very smart to get something that counters them, like the, um, like the Valkyries. Um, in any case, Boxer now moving out on the map a little bit. I think he wants to secure his third base location. And so I don't think he's going to go for an attack just yet. I think, I think he doesn't quite have the, the ground army to really accomplish that. And now this map, we didn't get to really see this map in, much in game one, but there are two bridges right in the middle of the map. Right? There are two bridges right in the middle, and it's Im basically impossible to break a Terran going over those bridges. We've seen it tried again and again in games throughout the Star League, and you know by Terrans and Protosses, and I think Zergs as well, trying to go across that bridge. Um, it's just so difficult to do that if they've got it set up. If they've got, if they've got their tanks, your units funnel so hard on the two bridges in the middle that it's just impossible. Now this map, as we're seeing right now, has a way to go around it, even if they have control of those bridges. And it looks like Boxer's not trying to control the bridges. He's just going to try and set up def more defensive posture, less aggressive at his base. But there's these land routes to go around the map to attack from different angles. And it looks like both players are going for a sneak attack. Oov is pushing his tanks around the side. The exact same position that we saw Boxer put his tanks on when Oov was in that position last in the previous game. Boxer now going for a drop behind the expansion of Oov on the other side of the map at the same time. He's actually trying to cross the bridges. Can he take control of this side of the bridge? He's going to try and retreat across, back across the bridges. It looks like he's barely going to escape. Um, he killed one or two SCVs there, but um, he didn't... Oof was in not quite a, the best position to control the bridges, but he was in just barely of a good enough position to control the exit to the bridges, and Boxer didn't want to contend with that. He saw an opportunity, perhaps, with Oof having so many tanks on the left side of the map, he saw an opportunity to move into Oof's side of the map, but it didn't quite work out. He wasn't able to do that. Boxer going across the map here. Attack moving. He's just ignoring the fact that there's mines because he's got so many units. Goliaths um, are pretty good at picking off mines as well as tanks. And with the rates overhead, as soon as those mines pop up, he can actually kill them off before they actually um, target in on his units. So it's pretty safe to do that. A scan might have been prudent, but, you know, it's pretty safe to do so. Boxer has now completely stopped mining stopped the mining of this extra base of Oov. And he's actually going in and trying to kill off the command center now. He's dropped on the low ground. Oov is countering, though. He's going to try and come in with his own wraith. It's wraith on wraith. Uh, Oov has the superior wraith count. Can the Goliaths do enough damage, though? The Goliaths are being cut off by the tanks, so the wraiths can now kill off the tanks that are killing the Goliaths. And it looks like Oov is going to take this position. And a huge advantage, actually. Boxer just lost a lot of stuff. 
I don't know if actually did he kill the command center? I think he killed the command center off. So that might be worth it. And oh, there's the Valkyries a little bit too late. A little bit too late on the Valkyries. <clears throat> um so that is not a good situation at all. Um Yeah, Boxer looking to be in trouble. Oof still has control of that top left position. So Boxer cannot mine at that base at the sort of inside 11 but he also can't take the outside 10 uh, expansion either right now and Uv is now pushing in from both sides doing a pincher where each side of each claw of the pincher each side of the pincher i don't know how to say it each side of the claw is a group of tanks and he's pushing him back and taking out tanks as well and those valkyries are now just sitting impotently above as the tanks die and boxer's gonna lose that base Uv is taking a commanding lead in this game. Boxer has done a really good job of of taking out the side bases and being tactical, but he needs to do more of it. Uv has been able to retake the right side expansion, and he has not had any harassment against the inside expansion at sort of like the 4 or 5 o'clock position. And oh no, he cloaks! He scans! The Valkyries are now able to kill off those wraiths, and so the wraiths go down completely, which is a pretty big deal which would be a big deal if Boxer wasn't losing the ground game as well. Boxer is now losing his tanks here. He's having to siege up right outside of his natural, but Oof has too much stuff. Oof running in with SCVs to draw the fire, and the tanks are moving in. Boxer is losing control of his choke point now. He has to fall back into his main. He is now not mining anywhere, and he's going to lose his, his main choke point as well. The Valkyries are doing nothing. Was this a huge overinvestment in the Valkyries? He's got four Valkyries. He killed off the race very quickly with them, but now the Valkyries can't do anything. Imagine if those were Goliaths. Oov is marching into Boxer's expansion. This is the last game, ladies and gentlemen. This is game five, and Oov is marching into the base of Boxer. It could all end right here. The last game of the series could end in moments here as Oov is marching in and taking control of those factories. Now, he might get a round of units popping out of those factories to kill this off. The SCVs come off to attack the siege tanks. They're forced to unsiege. Um, if Boxer gets a round of units popping out right now, he could be able to fight this off, and it looks like he has fought it off. The tanks have fallen back, but I think it is just perhaps too much damage done. Uh, Oov just has too many units going across the map. Look at this. He's actually running those tanks back in. He's going to try and target Boxer's wraiths um, while he's running these tanks across, and this that could be the killing blow right there. Those tanks moving across the map. The, the engineering base landed there, and it's going to last about two seconds against these tanks, so he actually lifts it up just to save it. Here it comes in, and now Oof has made more wraiths, but the Valkyries are still alive, and they absolutely melt those wraiths, so the wraiths are just still a non-issue. He's kept those Valkyries alive, but he's got so many tanks. He needs wraiths as well to be able to fire down. He needs something to be able to kill off these tanks. They're running into the main again, this time with twice as many uh, still left alive. And Boxer is in deep trouble. There's more tanks coming in as well. It's going to be eight tanks for Oov. What can Boxer do right now? Maybe if he gets some wraiths out, he can perhaps uh, just slowly whittle down these tanks. But in the meantime, he's going to park up. Here's is it, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to siege up outside of the factories. If he kills off those factories, it is over for Boxer. He's doing so much damage. And you could see it on Boxer's face there. He is not looking good. He's just kind of like fighting for dear life here. But I think... You know, I, we saw it on Boxer's face that he was just not quite as focused or invested in this as he really would be if he thought he had a fighting chance, but he's instead having to fall back deeper into his main, and I think this is going to be it. Oh, no, the SCVs are transferring. Are they transferring? Are they going? There's the GG! There's the GG! He's done it! Oof has done it! Oof has won his first OSL. Oof has won the OSL MSL in the same year. He's absolutely done it, ladies and gentlemen. Oov, I love Oov has shown himself to be the dominant player. He has taken the throne away from Boxer. Boxer, previously the best Terran on Earth, has been actually <laughs> restarted back to the previous one. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the end here. Um, Boxer has, has lost the game and... Oh my god, Oof has got to feel so good right now. And I thought this VOD had the ceremonies at the end, so I was so sorry that I don't actually have these ceremonies at the end. Um, but um, 
Let me see if I can pull up a picture of something like that on the side. Oof has done it. He has secured his legacy, ladies and gentlemen. He secured himself uh, a, a spot in history as being able to, to win both Star Leagues and to establish himself as the new school Terran that can defeat the old school Terran. And just absolute legend. And um, yeah, just, just absolutely crazy. Okay, let me pull up some pictures here that I've found of these... Uh, these guys afterwards i'm sorry i thought there was going to have a video of this ceremony so that's pretty epic that i do not have that it's an epic fail but um if you guys are watching this on youtube later i will try to find uh some video of this and if it's possible i'll put a link a link to the uh the ending ceremonies in the uh in the video description so you guys can look at it but here's a couple of video pictures for you guys to look at at least that i found on liquipedia here um Look at that. Boxer is torn apart. You know, we saw at the end of the game, he looked almost amused, um, almost amused by that situation. But, uh, you know, it was also just a really disappointing. Again, you know, like I said, this is, um, <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can find, uh, maybe I can find a video of, of that ending or something like that as well. <laughs> if you search for, if you search for ever O four O S L, you get all my videos. So that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, let's see if I typing ending, ending if that helps. Uh, twenty twelve ending. Uh, oh, is this it? Here we go. I think I found it. I think I found it. Let's see if this is it. Um, okay, this is apparently just some sort of dedication video. Never mind. <laughs> it doesn't actually show. Okay, well, actually, here's some. There's some footage. There's some footage here of the ending. So we can watch this. <clears throat> Get a little bit of footage here in really low quality. So this is like someone's someone's tribute music video. But uh Wow. Oove has done it though, ladies and gentlemen. And again, that's gotta feel so disappointing for Boxer. The first Star League that he's been in the finals of in years. And uh not quite able to pull off. He took it to game five! He took it to game five! And there were moments where it looked like he had an advantage as well. He won the air battle. He got those Valkyries and he killed off all of Oove's Wraiths. Look at this, they're actually even hugging at the end though. Even though they, you know, there's a lot of emotion going on. Um, Boxer is just kind of devastated, but still happy for his teammate and his protege, right? You have to be like happy for yourself, but also like... Or sad for yourself, but also happy that like... The accomplishment of your teammate and your and your compatriot and, and this person who you brought into the fold and trained up, you know? Showed him the ropes, you know, reined him in and made him a superstar. And now the superstar has dashed his own dreams. It's like, gotta be so, so bittersweet. Look at that. He's crying and he still turns to give a little bit of a handshake. Absolutely amazing. Um, and that's why, you know, I didn't know. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do the last raffle in a minute here. But uh, Diggity's got to go. See you later, Diggity. Um... But, um, yeah, just so, so meaningful. And this is why, you know, a lot of people, I had never actually seen these finals before, but a lot of people recommended to, to me, uh, Artosis recommended this series, and uh, a lot of other people, since they knew that it was this series, that had seen it before, were like, dude, it's going to be great. It's going to be epic. And uh, it did not disappoint. These finals were absolutely amazing. So, all right, well, this ended up being a perfect little video with a little sappy music and some footage of the ending stuff and some some tribute to their their friendship and companionship and that kind of stuff so cool anyway so wow amazing series amazing series and an amazing star league you know i got to cast the whole thing and i think it was pretty cool to be able to watch the whole thing all the way through and find see see the stories of these two players um, you know, throughout the whole thing. Apparently this was dedicated to Boxer, not to both of them, so. 
Okay, there you go. Anyway, so here's one of the pictures I found of the ending ceremony. And here is Oof getting the big fat check on Liquipedia. It was 20 million won, which is about uh, 18, 17 or 18 thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. Um, the exchange rate in 2004 might have been a little bit different than it was in. It's probably different now too. I I still remember the exchange rate from when I was there in like 2010, 2011. Um, but I think it's pretty much about the same. So, 18 and that's pretty good. Eighteen thousand dollars is pretty good. Pretty good haul, you know, especially for the time. This was the young days of esports. This is this is before League of Legends was a twinkle in the eye of the founders of Riot Games. You know, this is before MLG, the years before MLG and before um, all of these competitions. Esports has become such a big thing nowadays. Um, and this is this is before it, right? Korean esports started esports as we know it, and this is one of the, you know, the the most beautiful moments and 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 finals of, you know, these early days of of StarCraft history, and, and the StarCraft history is esports history. So, you know, uh, a eighteen thousand dollar first prize was an epic amount of money before you know to to win by playing video games you know so i mean people it would only have been four or five years since people had internet that was fast enough to play these kinds of games very very easily so anyway um anyway that's that's I, that's gonna do it i think that's uh that's i'm not sure what else to say at this point so um yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, that was an epic series. It was an epic Star League um, from start to finish. Just my mind is just still blown by the amount of talent that was in this whole Star League. You know, this is Boxer versus Oov in the finals, which is crazy. You had the third place match could have been finals. All the semifinals and all the quarterfinals even could have been finals, basically. Um, such strong players all the way across the map. Um, so for Oov to win in this Star League, possibly the most stacked and difficult Star League maybe ever, um, it's just it's just amazing. And he didn't have an easy route. You know, Boxer went through Sync, who I would say would be the bottom tier of the round of eight, but Oov had to go through Reach and through Nada, who are two of the strongest players. And he's had to go through Boxer, who is historically the strongest player, if you look at the achievements. Um, so, you know, an epic win for, for Oof, for sure. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that very much. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if this is on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube later, I think we're going to end it here and just say thank you um, since I'm going to do a giveaway on stream. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, uh, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube later, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any feedback about this particular finals, um, and also, what should I do next? Should I do another OSL all the way through, like I did this time, ending with the live finals? Should I do more live events for semifinals? Should I do, or should I just stick to doing some of the cool games and still doing some finals as live events too, like something like that? So let me know what you think. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. GG.